hate speech is just it's 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 hate it's not i hurt like i'm gonna hurt your feelings it's i'm going to say that your whole personhood and your whole being is crap and i get to have the right to to denigrate your whole race based on how i feel about your race or how i feel about your sexual orientation Emily, thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure, Artie. I, 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 I'm excited that you invited me. I can't wait to see what we'll, we, we will uh, get into. I'm sure it's going to be quite interesting. Yeah, it'll, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because it's like uh -huh. I interview authors. I interview like people that do things and we're, I mean, you host spaces and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but it's like we've just developed a friendship and I'm like, I mm -hmm. really enjoy talking to you. I can't even remember exactly how we met. I, you went to my space or I went to yeah. yours and then we started inviting each other. And then uh, I just, I loved your curiosity. And yeah. like, we don't always agree on things, but we can have really good discussions. And I always love that. Yeah, that's why I love our conversations. I think it was a, a space. I think it was, it was Christelle's space that you were mm, into yeah. at some point. And you talked about your podcast and I was curious about that. And I, I, I DM'd you and I was like, I think I heard you in a couple of spaces and yours too. And I was like, okay, can I talk to you about that? And you were like, yeah, sure. But yeah, you're right. We, each time we kind of discuss the podcasting a bit and we just started talking. <laughs> it was just like more yeah. interesting. Uh, and, 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 and yeah, I love, I love that there's a, I like how your curiosity manifests. And in mine, like it matches because it's about the exploration. And we would start with something crazy as, I don't know, the making of straws. And we would have like things to say about it. Yeah. Like, you know, it because it's just uh -huh. interesting and fun. And so, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, how this conversation we will evolve. I think we will start at a point and end up somewhere super random, but fun and unexpected. And I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. Well, your, your spaces, you call them nerding out and I love it. And I'm like, uh -huh. when I'm thinking about this conversation, like yeah. leading up to it, I was like, yeah, we're going to nerd out. We're just going to go into like whatever and it's going to be fun. So mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. kind of adopting your, your ethos for the conversation. Exactly. So I yeah. like that. Um, what drives your curiosity? Ooh, that's a good question. That is a very good question. I think, I think that my instinct drives my, my curiosity. And mm. it's because, and maybe a worldview that I have. So first of all, I believe that with most things, it, there's more than meets the eye. There in, in, in a lot of things, something can seem super mundane, even boring or basic, but, and, and it may appear that you already have the answer about something that it's well known and common sense, just about straws, just about whatever, right? But if yeah. you look closely, then you will see other things appear in the peer view that you had not seen before. Even something, I don't know, I don't have any example, but something like, uh, I'm gonna say, uh, how do, uh, why do leaves disappear, right? Why do leaves fall in the fall? I mean, there's mm. science, but like, it's something that most of us have a sense, like, you know, you change the seasons, but if you dig, yeah. if you, f then you will find all kinds of interesting things about the changes in the atmosphere, the, the currents, right? Like that, that goes like the, the hot currents and, and the cold currents and however nature's change. And then the world expands. And you discover all those things that you had not seen before. And it's like, wow, you know, it's a sense of wonder then that you're able to discover. Yeah. And I've done it enough in my life about many things. I, I can walk and suddenly I see a pattern on 
the ground or I see a random flower that just fell and just the way it's there, it's like I see, um, it's like suddenly something, it's like a composition. So I see many connections with random things and I, I'm like, can't you see this? And somebody's like, it's just this. And I'm like, no, it's not, there's more. And, uh, or yeah. if I don't see it, I sense it just in the way that somebody will say something or not say something or stress something. And, and then I'm like, let's get into that. And so I guess that's why the ethos of nerding out is so random. And it's tough to market because I know that where we start is not where we end. And you just have to, and so far I only sense it in the conversation. And so that's why I'm asking yeah. questions. We're talking, we're talking, and then bam, right? We're getting into what I call the good stuff. Like we talked about nostalgia or we talked about like in the space when you came and we talked about Beetlejuice, the all the, the legal things surrounding things, and then it becomes another conversation. And so it's a long yeah. answer, but curiosity is, first of all, having that belief, right, that there is more than meets the eye, having experienced that enough and, and refining how you navigate to go and find it and, and, and draw it out, either of people or of things so that you can present it to the world yeah yeah i like that i i feel like curiosity helps us approach the world in a better way like mm -hmm. if you if you come across somebody who has a different opinion than yours and um it, it's easy to like label people and write them off like oh mm -hmm. I, i've now i've labeled this person they're this mm -hmm. and i don't I, like labels kind of like make it so you don't have to consider somebody's opinion because you, you're putting someone in a box. Mm -hmm. But I think when you're curious, you you approach people and topics of like, okay, I don't I disagree with this person, or or I you know maybe I don't I don't align with what they're saying here, but um I still want to know like why they think that, or I want to know like why they're interested in that, or like what. I mean, because people are interested in things where I'm like, I'm not interested in that at all. But mm -hmm. then like diving into like why they're interested in it is just interesting to me. Okay. So for you, it's a knowledge of the person and why they do things, right? It's 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 like it it allows you to to have a a a, a mind that is more open, you would say. I think so. Like I I'm interested in ideas. And like, I'm interested in people too. Like I'm interested in psychology, but I think, I think if you want to like be exposed to a lot of ideas and interesting mm -hmm. ideas, you have to be curious about people too, you know, because right. uh, to get those different ideas, you have to deal with different people, people that have different interests, that have different perspectives. and when you get to know all these different people that have these different perspectives, you come across these different ideas. Like I'm, I'm a really big book person. So I feel like I, I read and I get exposed to these ideas where yeah. I'm like, Oh, I haven't considered that perspective. And you can get that from videos and audiobooks and uh, podcasts and everything too. Mm -hmm. Books have just been where I've gotten that. And then, I mean, the podcast is an extension of that curiosity where I, I get to start inviting people who I read their books or I want to read their books. Like I love reaching out to people and be like, I'll read your book. You want to come on the podcast, you know, <laughs> or like their podcast or their book might be on uh, mm. uh, Spotify or something like that. Yeah. And I can, I can listen and then interview them. And I, I think it's cool. I really like it. It's, it's really but. cool. And I like what I'm hearing because it seems that we, so it's like your curiosity and my curiosity, it's like a, I wouldn't say a perfect, but I almost want to say like Venn diagram. Like we, <sighs> we, we have things that we are 
Like, I'm also curious about what makes a person tick, but yeah. you have a, a curiosity about different things, like about their ideas and why they say certain things and you want to kind of dig more into their minds. I have that too. Would you say that you're curious about things like in your surroundings or not so much? Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more? Okay. So I once was on a walk and I saw this worker kind of spread some, there's a word for, for it uh, in French, it's paillis. She was spreading basically straw things, right? Like little wood dust on yeah. a bed of flowers for the city. And I was like, why is she doing this? Right. And, and so, and then I stopped and then she kind of told me why. At my new job, right, I saw a man eating breakfast, standing up, and he was perfectly relaxed, not eating in a rush. He was just purposefully standing up at this bistro table to eat his, his breakfast. And it was like you had hmm. seats everywhere. He was just standing next to each seat. And I had to ask him, why? Like, why are you doing this? Like, and so it is about people, but it is about like anomalies that I see or things that are interesting mm -hmm. that I see in the environment, like the example of, of the flower just laying there, right. Or, or the way things are shaped and aligned. If like you have outside and you have like, uh, let's say, for example, I was in Toronto and at the city hall, they have all those, uh, I don't know, structures that are perfectly aligned and it makes like this design. So I see things like that, right? That's part of mm. my curiosity is like, oh, that's such an interesting pattern. So I guess I'm asking, is your curiosity really people focused and on, on their ideas or are you curious about things in your surroundings? Uh, both. Yeah. Okay. I, I can think of I can't think of examples off the top of my head, but yeah. I can remember it happening multiple times where something is going on or I see something and uh I'm I'm definitely the type of person that if if I think there's somebody in the area mm -hmm. around me, maybe um in a different country and there's some custom being done or something like that, or or some physical thing that I'm like, oh, that's yeah. interesting. I'll ask somebody like, okay. I, I, I will always ask. Cause I've been in those situations where mm -hmm. maybe you have, I'm sure you have too, where it's like, you want to ask somebody about something yeah. that you see yeah, and then the opportunity leaves. And then you're like, I, I should have asked. asked. I should have yeah, like, asked. now yeah. I'm just never going to know uh -huh. and that maybe was my chance. Right. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Okay, you've, cool. You've had that happen a bunch. Yes, yeah. I've had that. I've had yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm I'm just I'm always interested in things. I always uh -huh. want to learn more, and um, I always I've changed my mind on things like mm -hmm. important things in my life multiple times. Right. Like, uh, politics, religion, like big things. I've changed my perspective on over uh -huh. in my life multiple times. Right. And. Uh, that kind of gives me the impression that while I do think I'm, I might be right on some things and right. I might be closer to the truth than I've been in previously. I'm like, I, I there's always this possibility mm -hmm. that I'm wrong about mm -hmm. things. And mm -hmm. I assume that I'm wrong about things because mm -hmm. I just think it, we humans are not capable of knowing everything. And we just, there's going to be things we're wrong about. Like, I agree. How do you, how do you approach that? Like, do you, have you changed your, I don't know, beliefs or thoughts on big things in your life? Mm, that's a good question. Um, to some degree, to some degree. Mm. Um, in things like religion, especially, I'm very convicted by. However, what I've grown in is to, 
and especially since I'm on X, and especially since like running those faces and 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 hearing other ideas, others' ideas, I should say, um, I've been able to at least more than um, I've been able to consider and and fully appreciate other people's perspective more so than before. Before I was giving you the courtesy, I think, of hearing your point of view and maybe ask you a few questions. But now I guess I am more like I still like before I still wanted to debate it and 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 say, oh, why do you think this way? And somehow have you acknowledge my point of view. Right. Yeah, and and, yeah. and but now I I'm like well, that's what the person thinks. And I kind of accept it as is, like not trying to change it. Uh, I've, I've come to, I've come, yes, for other things other than, than faith. Uh, I've come to realize that I was wrong on things and that maybe I should have listened a little longer or wait for it. And, and then you, it, it it brings more humility, right? And so I wish I had yeah. an example. For like, for example, just something very basic, right? I was sure at my new job, I was sure that it didn't make any difference if you brought a tray of, like there's a setting that you have to do and then undo like tear down, like whenever you start. And I was like, let me just do it earlier. It doesn't matter. And my boss was like, no, you have to wait. And I'm like, because maybe they'll bring us like, uh, they'll need the tray to bring us like a tray of dishes, right? And mm. I'm like, dude, it's practically done. Like he's not going to bring any other dishes. I just started this job. He's my boss. He should know, right? But I will have strong opinions saying, in my mind saying, this doesn't make any sense. And lo and behold, my boss obviously was right. And I'm like, okay, then like, I don't know. I don't, I'm not, you know, I, I am limited in my beliefs and I tough to admit believes that I'm right about a lot of things. Right. Mm. Um, and yes, most certainly I think, I think conversation and at least as you grow and you have more conversations, you, if you want to, of course, right, develop this ability of accepting things that you disagree with, other points of view, and considering that, yeah, I might be wrong about a few things. And I think that's the beauty. It's why I like uh, conversation so much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so do you... Okay, if you're, because this is something that I get frustrated with. I, okay. I don't have a ton of examples, but I, I remember being at one job. Mm -hmm. It was like a, a job where I was uh, packing up crates, getting ready for shipping. And it was like, it was just a temporary job. This was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to go to some computer and... It was like an old computer and they were like, okay, you just have to press this button, this button, and then this button. Right. And for me, like, I'm like, well, what do those buttons do? Like, mm -hmm. are you like that? Do you have to know like what, why you're doing something? Yes. Not I need just to know what why. you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I do. Because first of all, it stresses me out first because then I don't understand yeah. the connection. And then truth be told, sometimes I find that. It's it's not making sense. Why are you limiting my intelligence to just say, do this and this and this? Like, tell me why yeah. so I can make a connection. Yeah, those used to irk me so much. So yeah, I do need to know why for all the things. Yeah, if possible. Yeah, it's, it is it is kind of like, it's almost insulting when, uh, I find when it. somebody says, just press this and then do this. And then it's like, well, why? What does that do? Uh -huh. like, because it it it's almost like it's treating you like a button pusher, right? That's exactly. what a button pusher is—just somebody who's a button pusher. And 
the way I see it is like if you explain to people why they're doing something, like you're outsourcing better. that information and yeah. you can get more feedback. It's like, uh-huh. oh, maybe there's a better way to do this. But if no one understands why they're doing something, yeah. how can you improve? You know? Exactly. And and don't you think also that it's better communication to kind of like frame what you're requesting of the person in the context. Like we need to make sure that, I don't know, these crates are laid properly. So we have to press the buttons in a certain order. If not, this and this could happen. Like it doesn't take you much more time, right? Is is and then yeah. I understand why I'm doing this. And so I'm like, oh okay. And it's like I feel yeah. when you are also letting the person know why they're doing something, you kind of respecting one their intelligence, I think, and their ability I to agree. follow orders orders properly. So yeah. Yeah, I'm totally like that as well. Yeah, and then maybe <laughs> maybe you're not getting somebody to experiment and say, oh, what happens if I press this other button? <laughs> Wasn't it in The Simpsons that Omer kind of touches like the the red button? Like, you know, they're they're as so. this yes. So Yeah, like an older episode bit. where it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. don't don't press this button. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because you tell somebody, I mean, that's like a psychological thing. Yeah. If you, I think it's called reactance. If you, uh, a great book I've been reading is Robert Cialdini's Shildan- mm-hmm. uh, uh, Influence. It's a fantastic book. It's oh. longer, but it's like, I goes haven't into read the it. psychology of like why we can be influenced certain ways. And I think it's called reactance. And it's like, yeah. Basically, if you're limiting my options, if you're limiting what I can choose, yeah. then I, I want to, I like, I I feel reactance about it and I want to choose outside. Like, I'm less likely to go along with what you want because I feel like you're limiting my choices, my options. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, tell me I can't do something and that's and what I, I want to do. do. Exactly. Right. Like, it sets a limit. And I have I have this book. I just haven't gotten to it. But I remember being at school and there they were I think they got into the the psychology of work from Taylor right and the mm. specializing work and I think it came from Ford where you want to have the assembly line function a little better and so you specialize each part of the work and you do this and you do that and ask your af- if you're asking questions it slows the uh the workflow right it it's so we just want you to be a cog in the machine and have you kind of do the work. But it's, and I hope I'm I'm aligning the two things correctly here. So there's the school of thoughts and there's how you are viewing your employee. Do you view your employees as somebody that can think and, and really bring value to the work, right? Or their inputs yeah. will be valuable or do you see them as a cog and they just need to take the instructions, how you lay it out and not ask questions because it's going to slow down the work. So it comes with your own, like, if the person is one of those, like, I had a supervisor like that before as well. And we never, we couldn't get along because she was very much a uh, do this step and breaking down the step in a way for me that was so broken down that it was unrecognizable. It was so isolated. I'm like, Mm. I'm trying to think as a whole and I cannot understand what it is that you have me want to do in the end. And then finally, by the time I do all the things and get it, I'm like, oh, you just wanted me to do this. Like, why not say, please do this. This is the reason why. I don't know. Sometimes I think that it's not even a question of respect. It's just bad communication. You want to make a thing so simple that it won't be questioned. But if you meet a mind like mine, then the simple thing I will question because it's not connecting. It's not connected to anything else, right? It's not connected to the bigger thing. So I think it has to do with that too. Yeah. Those are great questions. Do you struggle with, uh, do you get bored? easily like do you get like are procedural jobs kind of hard for you to um keep interest in because it's just like all you're doing is just following a procedure there's not really much thinking and exploring involved that's a very good question 
And the answer to that is yes and no. Meaning mm. that yes, at the core, I am bored by procedural things just to do the thing A, B, and you do it really like, for example, <laughs> for example, the job that I have now, it's, it's, I, I like the job because I get to speak with people and like I'm a hostess for, uh, and a, this big hotel for the breakfast, but I get to meet all kinds of people. And with maturity, I've come to appreciate the procedures, right? I've come to realize why it's necessary. If you would have talked mm. to 20 to even 34 year old Emily, Emily would was not about the thing. She was like, this is boring and pointless. Like, why are we doing these things? But now I've come to appreciate with much pain why it is so. Uh, I got fired from jobs. I had, uh, I was always coming, you know, in disagreements with supervisors just by asking questions. It was seen as a challenge because sometimes I ask things in a certain way and, and they see yeah. it as a challenge. But I'm like, I just want to know why are we doing, and the why is almost accusatory, right? Like, what is the point of where you yeah. doing? So yes, but now uh, I'm better with it. And the example was, the example that I said, why do I have to wait to bring the tray and, and tear down the, the breakfast setting for at the small table? Why not do it a little earlier when it like I'm at the place and I can do it now, right? Or why yeah. do I have to, for example, my boss, like you have to put the heater, uh, you have to turn on the heater, uh, but he waits to bring the water first and then turn on the heater because it doesn't want the heaters to, I don't know, burn. And I'm like, I've seen others do it where it didn't matter. So it's at my core, I, I hate it, but then I've come to seeing the, the wisdom of it because that's where I've realized that I was wrong many, many a time. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I, I hate procedures caused me great pain in my life because I was disorganized. I, I you know, I, I, I did things based on inspiration and interest, which is good, but not great if you want to be super productive, right? So, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, I, I went on a tangent with this, but I dislike it but I see the purpose of it. So in a jobs like that, what I do is I try to embrace it. I try to embrace it. And in my mind, then I make, I use my mind to make greater connections. Like, okay, so this is part of the process. And then what are the benefits of the process? I make my mind work. I just, I don't go yeah. on autopilot. I just found ways to make my mind work and expand it so that I don't get bored, right? Uh, my mind always has to be stimulated by things, find new connections. Otherwise, it's just death. It's just, uh, am I human? Like, why am I doing, like, take a robot and have it do the things then if that's what you want, right? But uh, so, yeah, yeah, I found ways to use my mind. Uh, you kind of mentioned getting in uh, yeah. arguments about, like, procedures. Do you, uh, do you take well to authority or do you <laughs> challenge authority? me out um i'm getting getting better with it so but the answer would be no because when here's what i found i take well to confident leaders mm, okay. right so there are certain people that lead well and are confident in their capacity to lead that I don't question their authority, right? Hmm. Those are the leaders who will meet challenges and questions and and tell you why, right? Here's what I, I yeah. here's why I do this, right? And they welcome it because they see an interest. Um, they are leaders that are confident, also based on their competency. Even if they don't, yeah. like let's say that they have somebody in their teams that are more specialized than they are, they know they're confident in their visions or their competence to, to put things together or something. It just shows. 
But leaders yeah. who are not confident yet, right, aren't confident in their own leadership, will want to dominate and they will use their voice, their strength, and everything will be seen as a threat. Those I don't take well. I don't respect their authority because you're like, you're, I, I could see through, I'm like, you're not even confident about your own authority. Why should I respect it? Or I will make respect it, but if I can't even ask a question of why we're doing certain things, then I've learned to, to obey, but in my heart, I don't respect you. And I will find a way to, to not be under your leadership at one point or other. Yeah, that's, it's interesting because, I mean, you mentioned confidence and competence, but yeah, like it's, it's interesting because like people who are domineering with their authority, I guess would be a good word. It's like, that's often because of a lack of a lack of confidence. It's Absolutely. like so. I, I like that you distinguish between the confidence and competence because a confident, competent leader is worth following, but a confident, incompetent leader, like or they're feigning confidence mm-hmm. because they're incompetent. It's like no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna follow that. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I'm gonna challenge that a bit, but yeah. But those are also the the kind of leaders, if you want to use that word, or people in places of authority, they're the ones that are usually give you, they're, they don't like to be challenged because yeah. they feel so insecure about it. Like exactly. it's, 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 you're challenging their authority. Whereas a confident, yeah. a competent leader is usually like, they're, they're confident. So they don't mind, kind of like you said, they don't mind yeah. having something challenged because it's like, yeah, I, just because I might not have the best way of doing something doesn't mean I'm I'm not I'm competent. It, it yeah. just means there might be a better way of doing something I just didn't think of. You know? Uh huh. Uh huh. Absolutely. And so. you, 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 you. They come to. I've had great leaders in my life. I think of. I can think of my pastor. I can think of others as well. I have challenged that man across the board, like head on what, and it was about procedure. Why are you doing this? And I've challenged him like publicly, like this is wrong and you shouldn't have been doing it. And each time he was super patient with me publicly, right? Even at time I was like impolite and he was like, Emily, you should speak to me better. And it was like, I'm so sorry. Like, so because I trust that I I was able to see that he had our best interests at heart many a time. And I, even though certain times he's, in my opinion, not made the greatest decisions, he's found a way, he's found a way to meet me and say, here's why I've done what I've done. And then Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, okay, I can understand. And I've had others as well who were like, well, this, I don't mind you challenging me on this, but this, it doesn't work and here's why. And they, these two people and my pastor, he's absolutely, like, he doesn't mind being wrong about a certain way of doing things, right? Because he says, I'm learning, the church is new and whatever, but he is confident about his role as a pastor. Like, that doesn't, change. And so it makes me want to follow him. I was an unconfident leader. When I was teaching Mm -hmm. in the classroom, I was absolutely terrified, which made me domineering. I I wanted to be the cool teacher, the I'm going to understand, but the kids were overpowering me and running the classroom. And that made me understand even more that difference in leadership. So you Mm -hmm. have to have if you're competent, then you'll be more confident and you will be able to be a better leader and meet challenges. It's, it's first you need to, but at best, mentally, you have to accept and and have that confidence. I'm in this leadership position. I deserve it. And even there's something, if there's something that I can't meet right now or I don't have the answer to, I'll find out. And I'm absolutely rightful to be in that place. So that goes with the confidence as well. 
But what do you think, Artie? What would you describe yourself as a leader? I I don't know. A, a leader is kind of a weird word for me to use. I'm autonomous. I I like to think for myself and I like to I challenge authority pretty uh <laughs> pretty um willingly. I, I I'm fine to challenge authority anytime. Right, so that right. definitely doesn't bug me at all. But yeah, I But would I find you would you be so let's say let's say i don't know what would be a because the podcaster right you are pretty autonomous you don't have to i, I want to say answer to anything but i would want to know because you've actually weren't you in in leadership position jobs before um so I was a customer success manager. I've been, I've been like a supervisor at jobs and um, things like that, where like I've managed small teams. Right, right. And I like it. Um, and I've, you know, I've I've been complimented at times for. Okay. I'm diplomatic. Okay. I'm very diplomatic. Uh-huh. Like I try, I try to see all angles. Not that I always can, but I'm. I try to resolve things in a way that it like tries to satisfy everyone in yeah. the arrangement. Like, so like, yeah, there, there might be some compromises, but it's like, let's try to be pretty fair in things. I, I, I'm, I tend to be pretty do- diplomatic. Uh-huh. Would you be diplomatic? Would you consider yourself diplomatic? I would consider myself diplomatic. I think that it depends like in in even like leading a space or a discussion or if i were to lead uh let's say that i would have more experience even as a teacher or what have you i would i think i'd be a better leader because i'd be more confident in myself or in my capacity of making decisions and the right decisions right and i would be confident in those mm. and so if i would if I were to make a tough choice or just let it be, I'll be, I'd be more um, confident with it and not question my decisions. However, before I wanted to please people and it, it was uh, tougher, but I think that you don't have that, that much, meaning that you pretty much, it seems that you make a decision and you kind of like, well, that's that, you know, and I stand by it. At a certain point, when you're ready to make it, kind of, yeah, yeah. I, I have, yeah. So I'm, I'm assertive to a degree. I mean, like I'm, I'm pretty yeah. assertive. I'm, I'm disagreeable, <laughs> which some people, some people find surprising because I, I tend to be pretty nice, but I'm yeah. disagreeable. And I'm, you've seen this. It's like I have uh-huh. no problem like arguing against somebody if I think they're wrong. I mean, I did it. Yeah, yeah. 40, 45 minutes ago. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, if I think somebody is wrong and I can back up what I'm saying, uh-huh. either philosophically or with some factual yeah. information, I will express myself typically. Um, not that I need to at all times. Yeah. Like I can listen to other people argue right. and, and like just sit back sometimes too. Uh huh. But I, I do. I like to. I like to challenge things, and I. You do. And we talk about this. Look I love disagreement. I like, love where, it. I love what? it. Where is that from? I'm sorry if we're going all over the place, but where is that no, from? I, love I it. want. I want to know. Like you've mentioned that time and time again, and the last time I asked, okay, I have to ask you now. That was rich, but now I want to ask you, why do you like it so much? Where's it from? Is it because you you perceive that's the only way to get to the truth, or like is it truth that you're you're a truth seeker, or like? What is that about? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd say I'm a truth seeker, but yeah, I I feel like if yeah. you're if you're dealing with like disagreement, that's just like I think this and you think this, and we're there's just no conversation, right? Like, and 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 two people are just saying this is right, no, this is right, no, this is right, no, right. this is right, and there's no like openness, then right. it's not that fun. But if if there's like an openness where it's like no, because if Say you and I have like different philosophical positions on something right. and we're both trying to get at the truth. Right. And then 
I'm going to give you my best argument. Uh-huh. And that's like a sign of respect, right. in my opinion, because I if agree. I if I make the best possible case for my position, right, then I'm lining I'm I'm setting up a situation where uh-huh. if there's something in your position that didn't consider something I mentioned, like I'm right. giving you the chance to like sharpen your blade, so to speak. Right. And then I expect the same thing. Like if I consider it kind of like I one thing I hate to hear is, well, just agree to disagree. I hate hearing really? that because it's like, I, yeah, because it's like, no, I, I want to hear, best. I want to hear what you like. I want to hear what's backing up your thoughts. Not okay. just that we disagree. I get that we disagree. I want to hear why we disagree. I want to hear why you believe what you believe, right? why you have that perspective. So I prefer somebody to be like, okay, I, I want somebody to attack my position as best as they can. Really? Okay. That's different. Yeah. That's different. To eat. Okay. So here's why I think there was a difference. At first, when you said, I don't, I, to me, I perceive that if somebody is building the best case possible, right, for their argument, I see this as a sign of respect because you consider me intelligent enough and you have respect yeah. for me as, you know, the person in the conversation with you to, pres- to at least align your argument in a cohesive way. But that's it. But to now go further and attack somebody's point of view, now it's just not a per- like it's it's no longer we've moved from I present my ideas, you present your ideas, and then we kind of see if we have commonality or not. It's let me present my ideas and and totally debunk yours. That's that's different, Artie. Are you are you about that too? Like like, like let's get into it. Well, like debunk. Isn't it different? I don't know. Not well, so like if here's here's, yeah, here's what I'm trying to get. Means I'm right. Like if I'm debunking, that means I'm right. But I don't know okay. that I'm right. I'm just okay. like I want I want the best argument possible because like if if I have a flaw in what I'm thinking, right. and I often do, I'm I'm flawed in my thinking on many right. things, I'm sure. But I want somebody if if there's a lack of nuance or if there's something yeah. that is missing from my argument, then I want somebody to challenge that. So that I can walk away from that argument and be like, okay, either my opinion might change right. or I might better equip myself to uh, to accommodate for that perspective that I wasn't accommodating before. Okay. So and then okay, so then maybe define what is attacking somebody's argument or case. How do you see that? Well, I, did, I mean, we did it uh, in 45 space. minutes ago. Yeah, in that space where like somebody was saying, uh, yeah, freedom of speech is, a, is just a law. And I okay. said, well, it's not a law, it's a right. And there are laws that either infringe or protect that right. Like uh-huh. it's not, like freedom of speech doesn't exist because of law. It exists okay. because it's a right. And then, uh, okay, like in the US, we have laws protecting that right, but it's- uh-huh it's a right whether the law exists or not it's just being infringed upon okay for some reason i saw it differently i guess when i've experienced people attacking what someone says right it's been super contentious i mean not that it Mm. wasn't in your case right but it's been like almost saying this argument is stupid Here's why you're not really thinking it like through where did you get those facts? Like super, super contention. And here's why you're wrong. What I like about what you did is that, yeah, you were, you did not try to hide. You didn't say, well, I have another opinion or here's what I've experienced, which would be my approach. You said, what you said is wrong and here's why. And you presented it. And so I'm like, (laughs) to a lawyer, that took some ball. Anyways, uh, <laughs> well, I, I like I like that lawyer too. I really like her. I just I think I think there was some nuance yeah. missing in what okay. you said. But it, anyways, right? It, it it was so I would agree with that. It's just that I never I never went to a point where I would say like what you say is wrong. Like I would have to be. Even when I've been super convicted, 
I haven't presented my ideas this way. I would say what I believe. And then I'll leave it up to you if you, if we go back and forth, then it's fine. Right. But I wouldn't yeah. just be like going for the attack and like what you say is wrong. And let me just stare that down in one or two arguments. And there you have it. Like, I'm like, okay, okay, Artie. Okay. Well, okay, to be fair, cool. I'm usually, it, there's, there's probably not many things I would be like that. I'm you, like I said, I'm diplomatic. Usually right. I'll say, you know, it, it seems like, there's something like I will be way more diplomatic in how I right, speak. Right. I was a lot more assertive in in the way I took that on because yeah, I am. I, I I firmly believe that freedom of speech is a fundamental human right, and I think if you can't freely express yourself, then you have no freedom. Because if you can't express yourself, then then you can't express yourself. You can't express uh, disappointment or yeah. Um, anything with the government. And if you can't say like, I don't like what the government's doing, doing, then how are you free? But I mean, then you're just, you know, isn't a right to, to have somebody be something, be a right doesn't have to be legislated as so. Mm -mm. No, you cannot. Otherwise it's, 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 it's a belief. It's like, I believe this is right. I believe this isn't right. Like it's not a, it's not a, And I should, I don't know, in rare, I'm, I would have to, so I will say that I may lack knowledge on this, but how I see a right is that my rights need to be made into a law. Otherwise, how will they be enforced? Are you freezing right now or? Well, I rights are, are, rights in general, I would say rights are protected, not enforced. Like, so. Freedom of speech. Okay. And, and if you read the U.S. Constitution, for instance, the way that they mm -hmm. lay it out. And and I don't think you have to be religious to believe in rights. Um, it is an interesting... I was going to interview uh, an atheist, and uh, I want to interview an atheist. I used to consider myself an atheist, so it, it'd be fun to explore that territory again. But um, an atheist that believes in the U.S. Constitution, for instance... Because in the U.S. Constitution, it's written out that uh, they're basically God-given rights. So, like, right. you have God-given rights. They're given to you by God, not the government. They're like, mm -hmm. we are... I'm not particularly religious, but um, it's based on the, the idea that mm -hmm. um, we only answer to our creator ultimately. Um, yeah. Those are... Our creator gives us these rights. Uh, mm -hmm you know, there are aspects of life that God creates. Mm -hmm. And then the proper role of the government is to obviously, you know, help create a society, a structure for society, but also to protect those rights. Okay. Like that's the, that's the proper role of the government. And that's mm -hmm. why, I mean, that's the constitution, the U S constitution. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a government restricting yeah. document. It's not a document that gives you, perm like, it, it's not saying, here's what people yeah. can do. It's like, this is what government cannot touch. Okay. You know? Okay. I, I would have to. Okay. Maybe another time. Okay. I mean, I, 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 I was like, I don't know. I think it's, it's cutting hairs. I think a right. <sighs> Yeah, I think that a right is a right and it's it's protected by law. That makes sense, but it's still in the it's still law based, meaning that the freedom of speech is codified into law. Like otherwise, I don't know. I would have to again come and prepare, but instinctively I feel that Alex was right. Yeah. That, that's what yeah, I, I believe. There are laws built around it, and there yeah, yeah. are there are certain uh, exceptions that the government might, you know, legislate or something like that. Right. It's still you can still make the argument that when the government restricts it, it, it could be restricting a right. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, I, I feel like, all right, I I think that. While law is legislation is crafted around rights, that's how yeah. the U.S. Constitution is built. 
if you read the first amendment, it's, it's not saying this is the law. Like the law is that people can say this and this and this. It's like, Mm -hmm. it's actually saying the government does not have any right to restrict uh, your ability to express yourself freely. The government has no place in telling you what you can and cannot say. And that's Mm -hmm. why, like when I, what I pointed out, you know, and, and I read her thread where it was like, yeah, you, she said, for instance, the first amendment, uh, restricts your ability to defame people. And Mm -hmm. it doesn't like you, the federal government does not interfere when you defame people. You just have a right to express yourself Mm -hmm. and sue that person who you believe defamed you because you're expressing Mm -hmm. yourself that Mm -hmm. they did harm to you and you're going to make a, a, a civil challenge to Mm -hmm. seek recourse for that. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, they're, the government's not getting involved because the government can't get involved because that's a restriction on them, you know? Okay. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I mean, I, w- I would love to, I agree with you. I just, I just think, I I just think that it's still, I don't know, you might be right, but I still feel that it's, I disagree with it. Meaning that I still think that you cannot just go on defaming people willy-nilly just because the constitution said that you have freedom of speech. I I think that it's, it's wrong. It might be technically co- correct in terms of the law, but I guess then we would go more into morals and personal choices rather than what is legal or illegal, right? Uh, but- yeah, Well, I'm not saying it's right. I'm like, I don't think I know that's not what right. you're saying, I, I know. You don't, you shouldn't defame people and there are consequences for it. Like if, if I defame you, like we were yeah. talking before, if I say Emily stole a million dollars or Emily's a thief and, and I have no proof and, and you can, you can take me to court civilly right. and be like, he damaged my character. Maybe I, uh, I lost a job because of it. I lost income because of it. I'm suing him for recourse. Like mm. you, can, you can sue me for damages, but there isn't an actual law that I've broken. Like there, yeah. there's no, you can't defame people law. There, it's actually, or maybe there is. I that I I wouldn't know. But as far as the First Amendment is concerned, okay, the government does not come in and and file criminal charges for defaming. This is a civil matter as far as defamation is concerned. Okay, that's interesting. So it's a civil matter. So then because I've seen it where it's been explained to me why it's illegal for you to defame somebody, right? There's a law and it says if you are saying something wrong, then the person has the right as legal ground to sue you. I mean, we're going back. Um, It's not something like I'm well-versed in. It's just uh, so that to me, it seems that it's not just wrong. It's something that you just can't do. Be- like, like freedom of speech doesn't allow you to say whatever comes to mind, but I will put a pin in there. Uh, I'm interested in that conversation. I just need to have more information to kind of have it with yeah. you. Uh, but we'll revisit that. We'll revisit that because I think that it's very interesting that you feel so strongly about it. And there are a few nuances that I would love to counter. I just don't have the ability to at the moment. But uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. Yeah, and well, all, I'm, all I'm saying is like yeah. there's, there's not a there's not a situation where you defame somebody and the government shows up uh, at your doorstep to arrest you for it. Like that but doesn't I mean, happen. Is the government? It's it's you. You can sue me. Okay, sorry for interrupting. So, so the seat of the law. No, you're does good. it sit? Does it sit with the government or does it sit with the legal system, which has both the 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 government side, I'm guessing, and the civil side. Right. Even if it's on the civil side, it's still the law. Do do you do you see what I'm trying to say? Like, even if the government w- doesn't get involved, does it mean that it's doesn't mean that it's less uh, 
legal, right? It's still, it's just that it's not the jurisdiction of the government to, yeah. to, to get into it. Yeah. It, so I'm, I'm not an attorney, so I'm sure there's some things that I'm going to be yeah, saying yeah. wrong, but yeah. in general, there's a legal structure around the civil process for suing uh-huh. somebody. Right. But that doesn't mean that when you sue, you're suing because somebody broke a law. They're okay. suing because there's a legal process for suing and seeking recourse civilly. Like okay. I, I told you the example of, I, I brought somebody to small claims court once because I had yeah, an ex-girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. She, you know, I, I paid yeah. her first month rent and deposit. Yeah, yeah. She didn't want to pay me back after we broke up, even though I, you know, that was the yeah, agreement yeah. that we that had. Was the agreement. And I had to go to, you know, uh, small claims court, which is just yeah. a civil court. Mm-hmm. And there, I'm not saying she broke a law. There's no law saying, hey, you have to pay your significant other back when they lend you money and you break up. There's no law around that. It's just like, I'm making a claim that we had a verbal agreement yeah, and she broke it and, and yeah. she's just having to pay me back. I agree. I think that, yeah. Anyways, I mean, I think that <laughs> defamation is something else that I think it's a lot of you break, but it doesn't matter. Um, okay, Artie. I, I, I like though that you feel, I don't know. I like that. You're right. I, I used to yeah, feel I so. Love when, um, yeah. Oh, I, go I, ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I used to feel iffy about confrontation, right? But mm. somehow you're somebody I think that I would love to disagree about things with yeah. because it's still very interesting in terms of conversation. There's still like an openness to have the discussion. Like it's not so much for me as to the, I, I, I think it's the openness and the exploration. Like you're still willing to kind of hear the other person out right? And it makes for interesting conversation. Uh, And you, I feel you really listen. It's not just like, let me just give you the space to speak and then I'll come with my rebuttal. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, I've I've changed about that actually. Yeah. And I find that interesting. Like, uh, I'm more comfortable to disagree and I find it I see, I can see the fun in it before I was like, what is that about? How is that even a fun conversation to disagree <laughs> with people? But yeah, I can see, I can see, um, I can see where you're coming from with this. Absolutely. Well, and you can use AI now too, to like, one of the ways that I use AI and I used it today, uh, really? if I'm about to, if I have a position on something especially a legal argument. I type my arguments into chat GPT or Grok or something like that. And, (laughs) and have like, I always do this. I'm like, is this truthful? What I'm saying, is it factual? And it's like, I usually won't actually present my argument in that light until I'm, until I have it fine tuned where it's like, yes, you're not saying anything that's incorrect. So I I like that. And, And I think one of the things with like, experts, including attorneys, yeah. is sometimes people become so comfortable in their authority then right. that they, they stop wondering whether they could be wrong about something and trust their authority so much that the, their, their logic actually suffers because of it. Okay. Like they're, they're like, I'm, I've been doing this for 10 years. I know what I'm doing. And they, they just feel confident. You can actually see this. Uh, there's a great book about this called uh, Mistakes Were Made But Not By Me. And they Ooh. one of the things they talk about is the criminal justice system. Mm-hmm. You can see this in police officers and uh, investigators who are, they're interrogating somebody, mm-hmm. right? And this is why you get false confessions because they're so confident that they have the right person because mm-hmm. I'm an investigator. I know what I'm doing. I wouldn't be interrogating somebody who's innocent. So they're guilty. That is like, so interesting. This is, this is the problem with expertise is you become so confident in your expertise that you actually think you're right when you might not be. You stop wondering if you're wrong. You stop wondering about your judgment. Because so, you're an expert. 
So that that is interesting. So I've seen also this exemplified in three uh, three ways that I want to share. The first one, have you seen The Talented uh, Mr. Ripley, which was a, a movie that was, a lot of people said it wasn't good. I thought it was, but it was a Matt Damon who I, was a psychopath. I knew it was Matt Damon. I don't know if I've actually seen it, actually. Okay. Well, so, it's been a while because it's older. It's like early 2000s, right? It's, it's, yeah, it's a, an old movie, but basically he he is a psychopath and then he wants to, I think, impersonate this guy who's played by Jude Law. And at some point, I don't remember exactly the reason why, but it, he kills the Jude Law character, the guys, and impersonate him. And then I think Gwena Paltrow was in it and... For some reason, she finds him out, and at this point, she ends up being killed too. And the father, I think the father of, I don't remember the name of Jude Law's character, but let's call him Tim, right? The father of Tim doesn't suspect Matt Damon's character just because of what he believed about his son. He didn't like his son. He thought his son was just a playboy. And so whatever poor argument that 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 Matt Damon Mr. Ripley said the father believed and the whole murder was missed like evidence was right there mm-hmm. but it was missed because of the biases that the father had and i think the father was a police officer so it made sense like it 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 completely he completely ignored evidence in a good lead to that would point it to Mr. Ripley just because of what he mm. believed about the person that was murdered. And it was also very interesting. There was something that uh it's not a, one of the example, but I'm gonna jump to that. There was something that Peter said, right? Uh in the space that we were, uh for for the people listening, we were in, t- in a space where freedom of speech was uh, a space on social audio space on X where uh, the topic started with AI and really landed on freedom of speech. And one of the speaker, Peter, was, you know, arguing with Alex about who has the right to uh, to basically say that something is a bad thing to say or that is hate speech. And Alex said, well, the people who are being, uh, you know, done yeah. arms against, right? The people who are hurt. The person people who's who are hurt, hurt decides if it was hurtful or whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he said something. I was like, this is inflammatory. He said, do we, should we believe what they say? Are they credible? I interpreted like, are they credible uh, witnesses of what is the harm that is done to them or that they're hurt. Should we believe what they say? And he gave an argument. And in the comments, I addressed questions to him, which he answered to be fair, um, to be fair, sorry. And I asked, like, who, who in your eyes do you believe at face value? And then how do they qualify? right, to meet those standards of yours. And he says, I believe that everybody has a right, blah, blah, blah. And he was very extensive in his response on X. I just haven't read it uh, fully now, and I don't want to quit this conversation to go and read it. But all that to say is that we have biases sometimes that makes us ignore facts or truth. And we have to be careful about that. Another, a last example I, I'll use, and I kind of forgot what it was, but basically it was the same, is that something is evident, right? And because of how you feel or however you feel about the victim or the person claiming that wrong was done, then you disregard totally what was said. And I think that's wrong. How did we come onto this topic? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> because I connected with something that you said, and I was like, oh, no, no, no. Um, yeah. There you well, have I, it. I will say this. The person you were talking to, um, I I would say I probably agree with them quite a bit. Because yeah, that's what it, I thought. It is, 
like if just because somebody says you hurt me, you hurt my feelings with what you said, like the idea that that should then be illegal speech is absurd to me, right? Because how is that absurd? Okay, so like there's no such thing as like a right to have no harm done to you as far as like a broadly speaking harm, like sure, physical harm. Yes. Like okay. no, nobody, like you have a right to like have your, to not be physically assaulted by other people. But right. like the harm could mean somebody hurt your feelings. There is right. no law preventing someone from hurting your feelings. Okay. If you can't hurt people's feelings, then you can't even speak truth because sometimes the truth hurts people's feelings. Sometimes. You know? Not every time. Like if Yeah, you not every go, time. But I mean, but how here's why it's important. Because hate speech is just it's 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 hate. It's not I hurt like I'm gonna hurt your feelings. It's I'm yeah. gonna say that your whole personhood and your whole being is crap and i get to have the right to to denigrate your whole race based on how i feel about your race or how i feel about your sexual orientation i'm just i'm not just like hurting your feelings and saying i kind of don't like you i am making like hate is I would, if I had the choice, you would not be on earth. Like if I, I, I hate everything about your existence, basically, mm. right? It's not just about feelings and you heard them and, and no, that's why I'm, I'm so triggered with the, the woke thing. Like, it's not just that you're hurting mm. my feelings. It's like you're saying yeah. things that are defamatory about my race and you don't even know what you're talking about. Like, it's not just an yeah. opinion. You are just spewing whatever vomit comes to mind and you get to have the right to do so under free amendment, like the freedom of men or freedom of speech, uh, excuse me, but mm -hmm. no, like you're not just hurting my feeling. I, th I think it's, it's, it's um, grossly reducing what it is that somebody would doing. Like I saw, I remember seeing uh, who are these freaky, I'm sorry, I'm even myself, those what are they they had like like doll faces and big eyes they were like a project and they at some point said like the most outrageous things like they had they i want to i forgot their name why am i blanking so hard anyway they're a project in a community in the web3 community right and a lot of people w would anyway let me just stick to facts so this community on which I'm blanking the name on so hard at some point would get super outrageous on spaces and what their member of their community would, would post. Right. And at some point, even mm. Elon liked and, and reposted something they post. And I've seen from these people, uh, lynchings, like a person, a black person, a black man in a pink suit, like in a, a really grossed out face, like like lynched, like lynching is real happened and it's tied to the Jim Crow era and after after slavery. And they made fun of that. So you, it's not even like, uh, I think all black people are stupid. Like we're going and representing something that was horrific in history, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and using that as good fun. And I get to have the right to do that because of freedom of speech. Uh, excuse me, you're not just yeah. hurting my feelings. You are disrespecting my race. And that is outrageous. And why should I let you do that? Like, it's, 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 it's beyond me. People who are saying you had, and I'm going to go there, you had in plain camera a police officer apply pressure on the neck of a person and you have you're gonna have people come back and say man don't get your feeling hurt it's like this guy was a criminal it's like no arrest mm -hmm. a dude that's what you get to do as a police officer arrest him yeah like you don't get to say jews are stupid and we kind of hate them and we they should be uh annihilated from the face of the earth like you don't just Earth, my you come in against my race. 
you're not hurting my feelings. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like you want to go to war with me at this point. And I'm not about that life at all. I think that you are grossly mistaken if you're thinking that feelings, hurt feelings are just what it's about and that you get to do that just to get to the truth. Like what? Uh-uh, no, 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 no. This gets me fired up. Like, yeah. don't get me started. Uh-uh. Anyways, let me cool down. Well, we're started. <laughs> no, okay, so. Uh, all right, when, when it comes to. Yeah racist things being said right like, i am against racism i'm very much against racism uh -huh. and i, I want to talk about the woke thing actually too in a minute okay but when it comes to racist speech like yeah people can say horrible things and it is wrong like it mm -hmm. is morally wrong in my opinion right to to say you hate somebody because of the color of their skin mm -hmm. like or or what you perceive is their culture or whatever it might be, yeah. what, what their culture is, what the background is, what their sexuality or, or gender is. I think it is reprehensible to, to talk like that. Right. However, it is still protected speech. Like as far as the U S constitution is considered, what makes it protectable, which, which doesn't, it means that the government can't arrest you for it. The okay. government can't come in and say, you're going to jail because you said this about this race of people. Mm -hmm. And that, that might not be like easy to swallow as a concept right. because it's like, well, yeah, we don't want hatred. But the thing yeah. is, can you really easily define hatred? And I don't mean just like in a like ambiguous way that makes sense to you, but like as far as, Right. I want to eliminate hate speech and I want to, I want to write a law to eliminate hate speech. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about that? Like, what does hate actually mean? What does hate speech mean? Because it's like calling somebody an asshole could be considered hate speech. Should that be illegal? I don't think so because sometimes people are assholes and some, and they should be called out on it. Mm -hmm. Now that also means like you, you, it's the, it's the tough thing about freedom of speech is right. you have to be so, you basically have to protect hateful speech because if you don't protect hateful speech, you protect hate, you protect speech or you, you are infringing mm -hmm. on, on speech that could end up being truthful. It's not that the hate speech is truthful. It's just that to create laws to make right. hate speech illegal would mean you probably can't say legal things because of what that law could become. Like if you have a, an authoritarian mm. ruler right. come in and there's hate speech laws, it's like, okay, so let's say, uh, let's say the hate speech law was originally meant to protect Jewish people or black people or what, right. whatever group it might be. Yeah, yeah. If the wrong person gets into power because those laws would be in place, there's nothing preventing that same, that ruler from turning the law and and flipping the script and saying, now black people can't say this and this because I'm going to interpret this as hate speech. So like there's nothing keeping hate speech laws from ultimately being used against the very people that those okay. laws are supposed to be able to protect. Okay. So it's just, it's really dangerous territory when the government steps in. Okay. You know? So as as far as like civilly, like yeah, and and morally, yeah, hell yeah, it's it's wrong to talk about people like that. Yeah. And civilly, like yeah, you should be able to seek recourse for it. But as far as the government, like arrest him because he talked, he said horrible things about my race. It's just very sketchy territory to get into. You okay. Know? Well, I because mean, some like yeah, keep going. Yeah. Are you still there? Okay. So like. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, okay. let's say the fight for civil rights, for instance. Like civil rights, uh, we're going there. Okay, seen. let's go. So, like, with civil rights, free speech enabled rights those civil rights to be pursued in the U.S. because mm -hmm. uh, the the groups that were not that didn't have their rights afforded to them, that didn't have yeah. all of their rights protected, still had freedom of speech to speak out against the injustice. Right. But like 
if a if a hate speech law existed at the time of civil rights, right, then the power, the people who were in power could have said their speech is hateful and silence the people who are fighting for civil rights. Okay. Wow, that's a bold claim. Like, because they could have interpreted it that way. And they would have had the legal power to probably do so because of the way things were at that time. Does that make sense? Uh, it's a sl slippery slope. So it would have to be better defined, like, because the, the civil law movement, right? The civil rights movement was to basically abolish rights or laws that were, uh, discriminatory, right? Like, like to, like to sit at the back of the bus, like if the most famous example that is coming to mind, uh, to have the right to shop at certain places, right? So if, and I had to go, and that was a good question, like what is hate speech, right? And I had to go and, and read, reread the de definition. And it's, it's to have to say something that is discriminatory or that is disrespectful or that tears down another race, sexual identity or group, right, to incite. So let me just read it. So hate speech is any form of expression through which speakers intend to vilify, humiliate, or incite hatred against a group or a class of persons on the basis of race, religion, skin color, sexual identity, gender identity, ethnicity, disability, or national origin. So mm -hmm. this then, it, to make that case about civil rights, which was about acquiring rights, right, to get into certain places, there's no way that it is hateful against white people or hateful against the group in power. It's just, I want to have the right, the same rights as you have. So in for that reason, I don't think that it qualifies. Like, I don't think that, I understand the argument of saying it's a simply super slopes to that I don't get to say my full thoughts about your race or to say even hateful things about your race to vilify it, to humiliate it, and to do mm -hmm. those things like the that the law pr protects me because then if you start to legislate, then you do bring uh what I would call like an authoritarian kind of government where nobody gets the rights to speak against the government or to say this and this and that. And it seems that this definition is quite clear that we couldn't pass anything as hate speech. I don't think that it's, it, you would have to make a very, very strong case, but some people have and it could. But I think that it's impossible. I don't, I don't know. Like you have, you have a constitu constitutional right to express yourself for sure. But do you have the right and does it fall under morals? It seems that, is it that there hasn't been enough consequences that we have not, that we can't legislate? Like, I'm trying to stay on the same level as you are in terms of, because if you pass a law, right, it's for either to protect the, 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 the common good, right, of the society you are, and to, why do we have laws? Are there other reasons? There probably are. So I don't see what is beneficial in having your hate speech made publish made public and having more people kind of get into what you're saying like i don't see it as i don't know i don't i i, I can't make a case for it even legally it's just that maybe then it, it gets into slippery territory to define well then what is it what it is that i can or cannot say so on that I agree. I don't have the answers, but mm -hmm. it seems that it it should be a clear cut, open and shut case as to you you can't like how can you say vilify any person just because you just because it 
yeah. even if if I'm only on moral ground and basis, like you you know right from wrong and you know that it's not it's wrong. So why do it? Like why do it be just because you want to express it? That's not a good enough no. reason for me. Like but then again, that's personal. It's not legal. So I don't know. It's it's very interesting, but if there's no case, there should be one. And 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 I don't see how uh or why so, it should be protected. For real. With that, I I can explain a little bit. So again, it's well one thing uh that I have to correct a little bit that you said is you said civil yeah. rights was they they had to eliminate some laws and rights. They didn't eliminate any rights. They actually extended rights to the rightful owners, which are the people. So there okay. were rights being afforded that were there were rights being protected for uh majority populations that weren't being afforded to minority populations mm -hmm. and uh different groups. And okay. civil rights was broadening those uh broadening things so that the rights were equally applied to people. So it's like you have mm -hmm. a all these different rights, like you have a right to autonomy, you have a right to um, yeah. life, liberty, you know, like these are rights that we're dealing with. And uh, But there were laws already that was... There were laws, yes. That had to be laws taken and down and had to be removed. The, yeah, because those laws were infringing on rights. Exactly. So that's... This is why the concept point, of though. rights... But this is why the concept of rights is so important. And uh -huh. laws are not the same thing as rights. Because the concept of rights and rights being higher than the government is what, like, I mean, Martin Luther King used the U.S. Constitution to fight for civil rights, saying, like, okay. this is what the Constitution says. It's like all, all men are created equal. Like, right. this is what the civil right, like, this is what the Constitution says, mm -hmm. but we're not actually adhering to what the Constitution says. So something needs to change. So that's what civil rights was. Mm -hmm. And when it, you, when you read the definition of hate speech, there's mm -hmm. a ton of ambiguous uh, words in that definition. So like, it might make sense. Like you might be able to read a definition of what hate speech is and say, okay, I can understand what hate speech is. And we, we hear speech and we're like, I know that's mm -hmm. hate speech. I see right. people every once in a while on X that have like Nazi symbols and they'll say anti-Semitic things. And I'm like, I okay. think it's disgusting. Right, but right. I don't think they should be put in jail for it. I think people should speak against what they're saying so that people can see like, yeah, these guys are just fringe morons that don't really know what, like they're just in a cult of hate. They're mm -hmm. not like actually sensical people. But like right. one word that I wrote down when you were reading that hate speech uh, definition is vilify. Right. right. The reason what I'm saying about civil rights, if hate speech laws existed at the time of civil rights, there would have been nothing to prevent the government or white majority uh, that ruled the government from saying, "Oh, these minority groups are vilifying us because of our race." Like they could have made that argument and said, no. "Their hate speech, them fighting for." Them saying they're fighting for their rights, that's actually hate speech against us. They but could how, have, I'm they, not saying they would be right. I'm saying a hate speech law would have enabled them to make that argument and have some legal means of actually cracking down on people speaking up for their rights. I would have, I would have said it would be, it would have taken a absolutely skid lawyer. Not that it would have not tried, but the thing is that if you vilify, right, if you make somebody into a villain, um, then you're saying these people are bad, they are wrong, they do bad things, they are scum of the earth. A little bit like we hear uh, sometimes what, you know, oh, I'm not going to go to him, this is too easy. But like, let's say that you say, oh, all immigrants are 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 uh i don't know you're generalizing right there are they are bringing diseases they are stealing our jobs they are um they beat their wives they that's vilifying right if yeah. i go and i say you are oppressing me or you are discriminating against me 
then I'm not vilifying you. I'm saying the truth, right? I, I'm, I'm just yes, right. It's, it's, okay, it's but, like if it's it's true. So how do you feel vilified? It's true. You're doing those things. You know what I'm saying that it doesn't. The fact that it's true doesn't mean that somebody can't interpret it as vilifying. Because one of the things how? that you said in that is, if you said if you're vilifying somebody, you're saying you're wrong. Like you said wrong, right? Like right. if you're saying you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Saying somebody is oppressing you is saying they're wrong. You're saying they're, they're doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. So you are vilifying. You are vilifying no. what they're doing. Rightfully so. You're speaking the truth. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're correct to vilify what they're doing. Uh -huh. You're speaking the truth. What okay. I'm saying is if a hate speech law existed at the time, there would have been nothing to prevent the white majority or the people in power from saying they're vilifying us, that's hate speech, and shut the speech down rather like they would have used that law to fight against civil rights. So like, what I'm saying is like in a legal mm -hmm. context, like right, all right. of these words that we're using, it's like we might understand what they mean in, uh, in our conversation and we can agree that right. things are bad. But when it comes to actually like crafting legislation around it, right. I'm pointing out the the flaw with with using these words because it's like vilify. Yes, you are vilifying if you if you say somebody is your oppressor, you are actually vilifying them. And you, if you're right about them being an oppressor, then you're vilifying them correctly. Like you're you're condemning their actions, you're condemning their behavior, and you you might very well be right in doing that. All I'm mm. saying is that if if hate speech laws existed at the time. Hate speech laws, because of the way a democracy or a constitutional republic works, the people who have the power have the ability to manipulate the law in their favor. Okay. So they they would have been able to say, this is hate speech. They're, they're spewing hate against us by saying we're oppressing them. Okay. It sounds ridiculous, but it I'm just saying that that legal arg argument could have been made if hate speech laws existed at that time. I don't think it could have because of what I thought. And I had to go and, and see what does like vilifying mean. So I did say what I, I said, but then I forgot something. So it's to speak or write about in an abusively disparaging manner, right? So that means that I'm piling on as I said, like not only you're wrong, but you are a uh, you 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 kill cats. What they said about Asians, right? You kill cats and dogs, and you beat other people, and you bring diseases, and blah 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 blah. And I'm I'm painting this horrible picture about you. If I'm saying rightfully yeah. so that you are my oppressor or that you do and don't sing, those are verifiable. There's no abuse there. I'm not disparagingly talking about you. I'm just stating the truth. So there is no case that can be made against vilifying somebody. I, I I disagree because all of the words that you used in that definition, all of those are yeah. up to interpretation. Where how? Like, okay, because show me how. Like you have to, like you have to break every single word in a, in a legal context. Sure, every sure. single word in a law mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. to have some meaning. Like it, it isn't. There is some ambiguity in some laws mm -hmm. because some things are up to interpretation and mm -hmm. all that. But at the same time, like the law is like determining what these words mean. Mm -hmm. So exactly. it's like you're saying no because vilify means you're speaking abusively about mm -hmm. like. So if somebody, the fact that you're speaking truth, which mm -hmm. truth can depend on the context, like right. calling out oppression, like oppression itself can be ambiguous to determine what's being oppressed, who's being oppressed, who's oppressing. Stuff okay. like that can be hard to actually determine. Uh -huh. And what I'm saying is if a hate speech law, no matter what definition you can throw at me for vilify or hate speech or anything mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. I don't think you can argue. I, I if hate speech laws existed at the time of the civil rights movement, there would have been nothing to prevent the people that held power at the time from turning it around on the people who were fighting for their rights and claiming it doesn't matter that they it wouldn't be true. 
they could claim and manipulate the law into saying or into being interpreted that the people who are actually fighting for their rights are actually using hate speech. Like, oh, they're being hateful. They're vilifying us. They're talking abusively about us. They're, they're, uh, demeaning us by saying we're oppressors. Like the word oppressor could be interpreted as demeaning. So I'm How? saying like the people who are in those positions of power at the time could interpret it as hate speech. And then what would happen? I'm not like, saying it's right. I'm saying that's what no, hate no, no. speech No, no, no. But I mean, like if we're making a case for it, no, no. If we're making a case for it, then, then to point to, to what? I need to understand the bigger picture that you're trying to bring. Not just like, because there's a point as to why you're bringing this argument, especially the civil right movements when we're talking about hate speech, right? And even though I've, I've said, well, it's, it wouldn't stick because of this and that, you're saying, well, it doesn't matter. It could be interpreted in this and that. So are you saying this to say that then everything can be made into a hate speech and then hate speech is a term, is a term, sorry, that doesn't exist. It doesn't hold water. It's not substantive. And so we could, should get rid of it. Are you trying to build that case or are you trying to, to point to something else? Because I'm, I'm failing to see the bigger yeah, picture. In, in the context of, of freedom of expression, hate yeah. speech is antithetical to freedom of expression because of how ambiguously it could be interpreted. And especially if, if normally hate speech laws are meant to protect people who have a smaller voice in the overarching society, right? Uh -huh. But because of that reality that it's, it's meant to protect a smaller group in the population, that right. means a group that the group that's actually crafting the legislation usually has power to interpret things the way that they want mm -hmm. to some degree. So like if they can, if you get the wrong people in power, right. so like you might have a hate speech law that it does its job for 10 years or 15 years or 20 mm -hmm. years. And like I said before, then you get a president or prime minister if you're in a different country. And then they say, well, they just have a different perspective and they want to mm -hmm. interpret because laws have to be interpreted. And right. hate is a very ambiguous word because like I said, calling someone an asshole can be interpreted as hate. Yeah. Because of the ambiguity, ambiguity of that word, it just doesn't work because you're, if you give somebody the right to legislate hate speech, you, you give them to regulate speech in general, which is just dangerous because there's, there's no guarantee that those same laws won't be used against the very people that they're meant to protect. Mm -hmm. And th this is why like hate speech is a concept of like, does hate speech exist? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like people say hateful things and mm -hmm. in most cases it's wrong. Like, and it should, like, it should be condemned. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying as a legal concept, it, it's extremely sticky. It's a sticky area to give any room for the government yeah. to legislate against hate speech just because of what you're basically opening up Pandora's box when you do. Okay. That I do not disagree with because of its connection to free speech. So we, we might um, align and I could, like, I could see that argument and I could see where the government would lean and, and, and abuse that right. Right. Because we're talking about yeah. like the abuse of, the freedom of speech. But the thing is that there is the interpretation of the law and to validate what is and what is in hate, right? And to me, I, I need definitions to say, okay, I need to know on the basis of what we are starting as. So at least I have something to argue with. And you said something and I wrote down like validate and interpret into the law and what is hate and what isn't hate. And at some point, There needs to be a way to legally enforce consequences to spread hate. And though the, 
hate speech, right, is that you are intentionally wanting to disseminate ideas that are so hateful and so harmful, right, to the reputation of a certain ways that you want to bring other people with you. And I have to be careful as to what I'm saying. I'm, I'm trying to put an argument together, but instinctively for me, like I would have to really think what would be so slippery in terms of law, right? And to, to bring a law where you would have clear case as to how it's been, uh, you know, how it's been harmful. Like maybe you would have to, to, to bring out if like, because of this, like you, you have like a lot more of arrest cases, maybe to obtain loans or I don't know, I'm using what's, what's easiest to come by right now, but I can't believe that we won't come to this point at some point because it's not, even if it's just morally wrong, there has to be consequences and legal, right? Even if it would have to be pinned under defamation, like I get well, to okay. have the right to yeah, sue but... you or something because yeah. you cannot, I think, I think, I think that argument even is dangerous because then I could say like it's that means that freedom of speech has me has has me the, had the right to go on and defame you and which was the argument right that you said it's wrong but there's the government won't come after me if I say wrong things about you the government but, but the that government doesn't mean should. there's not consequences that doesn't yeah. mean there's not consequences I I I, I get that but then maybe what I'm trying to make as a point is that it should be as protected as freedom of speech. You shouldn't get to say whatever you want. But then again, to your point and the point that I agree is that there's no way that we could limit this only hate speech, right? Then yeah. you could have people that says if you, if you criticize even in a, a um, what is the word, in an articulated manner, you criticize like positions of the government, then that, I mean, I've read 1984. I've read like, it's, there's no way that you can pretend that. And 1984 was a book that I had to take a moment after finishing because it was just too real, right? And mm -hmm. so. It's a great book, by the way. I love that book. It's a great book. Um, it's intense at times. It's the ending, like the torture part of it, and mm, and the, yeah. the 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 rest of it. I don't know who's speaking. Maybe it's Big Brother who's saying all those things about what happened in the law. That did me. In. That was the story was intense, but then it's like, I if it hasn't happened already in history, then it's going to happen, yeah. right? And I don't even yeah. know when it was written. Orson Well, I think he wrote it in. Maybe the the, the a, beginning of the century, maybe nineteen. I'd I'd say nineteen forty. I think like nineteen. I'd say the forties, maybe maybe fifties. So maybe Could not have been the thirties, but I'd say my guess would be nineteen forties to nineteen fifties. Around right. So yes, maybe at the time. No, the the Second World War again. So that would. It would make it that there was already had been a, a first world war and then yeah. the second world war would be kind of happening. And so you had Stalin and you had those figures and Nazi was raising, rising. And so you, what he predicted, we have seen happen in the eighties, nineties, the sixties, the seventies and onwards. Right. So, so there's no way to say that, that we wouldn't be absolutely limited. And then what's true would be erased. And so, I don't know, it's not, it's so, not, it's not. I, I hate though that it's not more easily defined. I hate it. I think yeah, that I, I would yeah. want to make a clear case as to why it should actually come into law 
and 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 that without question. Would do I want somebody who who spreads hate speech to go to prison? Not really. I don't think so. I I would want them to to suffer like maybe some kind of consequences, which I could sue mm-hmm. them for. But then yeah. again, who does that, right? So, anyways. So it was written, I uh, published in 1949. I looked. Okay. That up Ooh. But so that's interesting. Okay, so with with this concept, right? Hate speech. Okay. Yeah. I I want to ban hate speech. Who right. do you have to give the power to do that to? The government, right? Yeah. That's the only that's the only entity that you really could delegate that authority mm-hmm. to. Yeah. The you problem have a is, problem with that. Well, yeah, because you you want re- the government restricted because that's an insane amount of power to to give a government the ability to say we are going to imprison people for hate speech. And this has happened in the past. It's like you you give people this power, uh, give the government this power. Right. And sure, it might go how you want it for a little bit, but there's mm-hmm. nothing, nothing at all preventing the government from reinterpreting what hate speech is to say, no, these people who are fighting for uh, equality or they're fighting for mm. some belief that they have, whatever it might be, that's actually right. hate speech. They're hateful toward the government because you can hate the government. And yeah. honestly, you use the word hate. You said, I hate this. Uh, like, right. I hate that this. And it's like, well, h- what's to prevent that from being hate speech? You literally said the word hate, right? Okay. So I think that expressing hatred, meaning that I hate this, right, is different than saying I hate them or I hate- It is like, it is, but then in a legal sense, okay, you're, you're, Basically about to, I, I don't want to assume, but you're, you're saying like, you're, you're kind of differentiating between hating a concept versus hating a group, mm-hmm. but the government is made up of a group of people. Right. So I hate, I hate these laws that the government has enacted. Oh, so you hate the government. You hate the people that are governing you. Like mm-hmm. that is hate speech. I'm not saying it is hatred. I'm saying this is an interpretation. This is an I'm argument saying, I, that I, I, can yeah. be made. Yeah. And it's like, there's, there's just nothing to prevent. Like once you open that door, there's just nothing preventing it from, you might, you might be good for a while, but it's like, you're basically like it, you're basically just any, the one mm-hmm. wrong ruler, one wrong leader away. Right from having those laws turned against you completely. And that's why I talked about civil rights, because if those laws existed, there would have been nothing preventing the government from saying, no, they're being hateful for uh, toward us by saying that we're oppressing them. They're being hateful um, toward us by saying that those laws are oppressive and all that mm. stuff. Like there's, there's just no... It, it's so ambiguous of a concept that there would be nothing preventing the government from doing that. It would have been wrong. They would have been wrong, but it I'm just saying like that's why you don't want to give the power to the government because they they can be wrong. And if you if they have enough power, then they there's serious consequences for when they're wrong. Like you people <laughs> like in politics, people go after their political opponent opponents, jail their political opponents, things like that. People right. that are like it, it's just a consequence of corruption, but also it's it's how government can devolve in, into more totalitarian kind of style government, right? Because if if you can, I mean, this is why the Constitution is a restriction on government. It's like no, the government can't tell you, like it can't tell you what you can say, what you can think. Like you can freely express yourself. You can believe in God. You cannot believe in God. It's it's right. up to you. The right, government right. doesn't have the ability to determine that. And that's why like totalitarian systems like communism and things like that, 
tend to they tend to attack the right to freely express yourself, including like religion. So it's like whether you're an atheist or religious, freedom of religion is actually really important because it's like your basic fundamental right to mm -hmm. believe and worship whatever you want. But right. the government, like totalitarian governments don't like that because God can never take a backseat to government in the eyes of a religious person. And that's mm -hmm. a problem for totalitarian governments. If a government wants you to be loyal to that government, right. you can look at like um, uh, North Korea, for instance, like mm -hmm. Kim Jong-un, he's basically a god. There is no like religion outside of that. Yeah. He is the religion, he, like, because the state has to be the supreme. Mm -hmm. You know? So that's, that's very interesting because to some degree, and I think that my fate colors my uh, beliefs, even though I do believe that God precedes government, right? Meaning that if you were telling me something that is going against the, the, God's law, I hope that I do have the strength and power and courage to stand up for that conviction. With that said, though, governments were, if you follow the Bible, instituted by God. So that means that they, they were given that authority. It's just that now it's come to be that you have people whom this power will absolutely corrupt and they will do wrong things with. But I think that limiting the government or limiting what the government can do, especially in terms of hate speech, especially because a ideally a government should protect his, you know, his citizens, then they would be within their mandate to mm. legislate against hate speech. And I um I am of the persuasion that they should. Carefully though, right? It shouldn't be like, let's make a law and, and like we have to study the ramification of this law so that for instance, if you want to legislate on abortion, I am against that because we have not thought out and through what that would mean. If you legislate that abortion is illegal, is illegal and you pass this into a law, is it a civil law? Is it a criminal law? Is it something in, in, in areas where uh, the death penalty is enforced? Is it considered first degree law, like first degree murder? Like, it hasn't been thought through enough. No. So, but it doesn't mean that it shouldn't be. That's where maybe I defer, right? And there's a case for the baby and there's a case for the mother and there's a case for them both. As in, there's a case for freedom of speech and there's a case to have a law that legislate and, and, and delineates your rights to to say hateful things um doesn't but the, mean that, but it's that would be an infringement on a right like you can't have a right to free speech and have a law restricting that speech no i think you can i think you can i think that it just needs to be well defined would it stay put as to where the limits would stay you're right maybe it would define it would stay within governments but it seems, I don't know. I, I just, I, I think. I, I don't see, I don't see where you say that it would be a slippery op opening an Pandora's box to, to legislate. I agree. Actually, I do agree. It's just. I do agree. I can, don't know. I, can I correct one thing though? Or push you back want to on correct the thing? thing? Okay, sure. Go for it. No, it's because you said 
uh, God created government. And yes. It, I mean, if you believe God created everything, then you can say God created government, but no, government is, there's, there's, government there's, is created by people. Okay. So here's why I say this. That's, and that's just, in the first, the, in the preamble, in the preamble of the U.S. Constitution, that's we the people find these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Like okay. it's we the people are creating this government. It's not God. And and saying it is God would be dangerous because then how is it if dangerous? the government can say, well, we answer to God and you can see this in like certain uh, certain other religions and, and where, where religion and state is mixed up in other countries a bit more. Yeah. You can see this where it's like the 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 person who's in charge of the government can say, act as, as if he speaks to God or his word is God or something like that and enact laws and say, well, no. I answer to God or something like that. No, but that's in, not what in, I mean. Like, yeah, the, but the government, it answers to people. You it know? answers it to people, answer. but it doesn't mean that people came out with the concept of government. Like, that's what I'm saying. Meaning that it governments existed before we the people came to be. and. No. Yes. How? How would a government exist before people existed? Well, I mean, what is a, what is a government, right? It's a, a it's an entity that has the seat the, the seat of power that legislates on how society should go and what would be functions and and rules and laws and transgressions so that it could a society could function. I mean. I might be of the cuff, but I think that more or less the gist is that of a government. And so, therefore, even a uh, autocratic government or a what would be a government where you have a king, like a a ruler, a it's still a monarchy, right? There you go. Yeah. It's still a form of government because it has to sit with laws and a governing of people. It's just that who governs. In, the, in a monarchy, it's a king, right? In a republic, it's the people. In huh. in uh, authoritarians, there's just, just one ruler or one party, but it still has to do with governing. Like, if you believe the Bible, God, it's not just God that created everything. And so therefore, by, by technically or by default, he created government. No, God gave the law to Moses, right? And he says he gave the Ten Commandments, yeah, and this government. is law. That's it is still a governing. It is, it's religious, yeah. But in that case, you're so you're isn't it? Isn't it still God valid? It's it's a governing of people, and it was just just like you need to obey me as God. Is you had a whole set of numbers and uh, and Leviticus, and Leviticus is the book of the law where you said you cannot do this to your neighbor, you cannot steal a cow, you cannot. Uh, say you cannot cheat your neighbor. You have to release a slave at a certain point. It's all the, the laws that set to govern the society and the people of Israel. It was a government. It's 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 to govern. It's not just. It's but the thing is that who was as the seat or on the top? Who was governing? It was God. But it doesn't mean that because God governs that it's not a government. It still has. The functioning and the structure of a government. It's it's like practical. It's not it's not believe in me or obey me. Is obey me and then here's how you are to live with your fellow human. It's a it's it's laws. If you do this, I, then the group of law, which were the Levites or the scribes or the Whoever was governing at the time said they have the right to prosecute you. You, they have the right yeah. to lynch you. Right? It's, it's a law. It's a governing system. So that's instituted by God. It's in. It's. 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 Anyway, I don't so think that first, it can be disregarded. Okay. So the first government was God, essentially. The God. God inst He instituted government because He has brought the law. And the law system to men. It's not just not, I created I, heaven I, and earth. I instituted systems for you guys to coexist in harmony. It's not us, the people, we thought, here's what we should do. 
Like, how do we think that we came up with everything? And no, that it no, started with we, us. I don't think we came up with everything, but I think government is definitely a, a human invention. Like, I think, okay. I think that's using the word government really loosely if we're saying that God was the first government. Like, he, if he, he created the first government, yeah. uh, like, he didn't, he didn't say, okay, here we have this, per- this person's going to be over these people. Yes. And this is the Senate or, you know. He said that. I mean, it's not that it was called the Senate, but how do you have the, the, he laid, this is how the tabernacle is going to be. This is who is going to registrate in the, the tabernacle. These people will be said of this. The king will have the right to do this. Or even you had, uh, Moses and Jethro who said, no, this is not how you should do this. Okay. So according to this, you should do it this way or that way. It's like you have things that were, that humans came with this, yes, for sure. But in terms of the first one to be dividing a legal system, it was God. But if you don't believe in God, then it makes no sense to you. Or if you think that it's God, I don't know exactly. Like I can, it would be sad to think, is it sad? I don't know. I don't really care that much. It's just, I, I think it's still a, a point to consider is, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I. What made you smile? I just, I, I'm I just, curious. <laughs> uh, what did you just say? Yeah, I, it would I forget be sad. It's something you just said. I just yeah, uh, it, okay. well, it wasn't anything negative. Definitely no, 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 it's negative. fine. It's fine. I, I'm. I I would have been fine even if it was. I, I was just curious yeah. as to to your mind. By the way, I'm super cool with this conversation. There's no offense that could be because again, I I enjoy disagreeing with you actually, Artie. So. We're cool. Yeah. So yeah, here we yeah. go. Well, you know, and I'm going to bring up something else. Um, okay. You, I do, I can be disagreeable, but I do take things to heart. Like I, it doesn't yeah. matter to me. Like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, and you mentioned woke and I, I know when I had Lou yeah. on yeah. Uh, the space, you mentioned his woke Godzilla short or video yeah. thing. And I was critical of wokeness uh, when I talked to Shivan Fleet. Um, because she equates it with like cultural Marxism. And I actually, I, I am still critical of what I was being critical of Mm -hmm. when I was critical of wokeism, but um, I'm not sure if I should use the word because I know there's different interpretations of it because like it it started with black people fighting for uh, racial equality and against uh, injustice, mm-hmm. but then it was kind of hijacked by so- the social justice movement to mean like a bunch of other things. And now there's 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 this uh, kind of this concept. What I right. would call what I would say is the negative aspect of wokeness is like this concept of like this hierarchy of oppression, like where you can look at somebody's race, gender, sexuality, yeah. and you know how oppressed they are. And I just, I just, I don't agree with that at all because okay. I just don't think you can look at two people, even looking at their skin color and be like, right. oh, that person has it better than that person. Cause it's yeah. like, there might be some, uh, statistic tendencies right. that might make it like statistically more likely, mm-hmm. but it doesn't like as a matter of fact kind of thing. It just, it's not a reality at all. Like right. you can't look at somebody's race. I just, I'm against the concept of looking at somebody's race, sexuality, gender, or any other characteristic that's maybe immutable or Mm -hmm. uh, superficial in the sense that like, I mean, skin is skin. Like we're all pretty much the same underneath that skin, right? I just, I don't think you, it's safe to make broad assumptions. So like a, a hierarchy of oppression is a, is a really broad assumption. And I think the biggest oppressor is the government. It's not really people oppressing people. It's actually the government that's oppressing people. Right. But I I did appreciate you bringing that up because it's like, oh, yeah, maybe I need to be more careful about that word or maybe not use it at all. Or I have to explain what I mean. Because like the other thing that I'm against, I don't like identity politics where it's like, 
we're mm-hmm. crafting legislation based on these characteristics as well. And there's like a push for like a policy and societal push that's ambiguous, mm-hmm. not clearly defined and shifts. And it's like, oh, these are, we're fighting, sometimes the word rights get to used. And like, we're not actually talking about a right. It's just like what mm-hmm. people want. It, it's it's a tough concept. Uh, I just, there are things I'm critical of what I would call wokeness, but I'm not against like any group fighting for equality or anything like that. So maybe I need to stop using that word in a critical sense, just to be clear about that, because I don't, I don't want people interpreting what I say as being like, Oh, he doesn't want equality or like, cause I absolutely do, you know, like I, I'm, I very much do. Like, I think, uh, I, yeah. I truly believe all people are worthwhile and equal. So that, and, and I think that most people that criticize wokeness do believe in equality, right? They, they want to defend yeah. some rights, right? And it's, it's funny that wokeness and, and freedom of speech are kind of like tied at the hip. They're like, well, I get to say whatever it is that I want, right? And to me, I was like, okay, let me, let me try to participate in, in the conversation, uh, and, and say something substantive. So that's why I checked what he had done. And, and by the way, I I like that he stuck to his guns and said, well, here's what I thought, even though to me, at least he appeared a little uncomfortable, right? Because you're going to say to my face and you're going to talk about George Floyd's and all the things that you, you have to defend what you put in a video, basically. Um, the thing that I, the things that I find is that most people don't really, even though they believe in rights, they just probably have like what I've encountered. They, they, they have jumped on the bandwagon of people who are woke or snowflakes. They just are overly yeah. sensitive about what is being said against a raid agenda and whatever. And that's absurd, which was the case that Lou was making. And my point against it is that it's absolutely not how it started. And you just mentioning that part, you are totally ignoring how it started. And a lot of people won't research into things or even yeah. ask themselves the question, like, how did it start? And, 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 and and even to say, well, people are hypersensitive about what is said in their in their feelings. Usually I find that on other things, the same people who criticize people being woke will be hypersensitive about other things, either that I said something that does not define you perfectly, or and you will have like you correct me very well about. That, for example, I don't know, I could, let's say that um, you spoke about wokeness and then I say to you, well, you kind of misquoted this thing and you're like, how dare you say this about me? And you are as sensitive. And I'm like, Mm. are you being coherent right now? Like, so they, they themselves ignore their own sensitivity because then I react to things. And if you stand... 10 foot downs on what you did say, then why do you care that I react? Yeah. I get to have that right. If you don't care, then don't care. Right? But you are as sensitive. You don't want me to see you as a bad person. You don't want me to see you as somebody who's racist. Right? But if you are endorsing racist ideas or at least discriminatory ideas and you want to hold on to this right, shouldn't you question this? Like if we're only on the moral grounds here and not even on legal ground, let's stay on moral grounds. You're Mm -hmm. endorsing something that is wrong or a prejudice and you want to keep the right to say this. So then don't come at me because I'm saying you, this is wrong and I'm feeling some kind of way about it. I, I get to have that right. You don't get to shut me down and say, Oh, you're being woke about it. And that's, that's why I feel so strongly about it is that people you've had 
2020, you had George Floyd, and then people realized, ooh, oh, this is actually real, what they're talking about, police brutality, all the things. And then people were like, well, essentially they were being questions, right? What you're thinking Mm -hmm. is wrong. And you're being called out left and right. And you're like, well, I'm kind of tired of being called out. So can I just say what I think is it? But what you're saying is discriminatory. I need to call you out on it. It is like, it's not as it's, it's not, or you're just saying, man, this guy was a criminal and I don't know. And I don't know what, but like, so, so, so the, the woke thing is about you feeling sensitive about being called out. It's not about other people who are sensitive about certain things. And that's absurd. Maybe, maybe you have others that will jump on the back bandwagon and they will make claims to, I don't know. I'm trying to find a case where I could see where it could be exaggerated, right? And broad, and I'm, I'm trying to find a case because there, there is like, I'm able to, to see both sides and, and make like, I'm rational enough to give perspective, yeah. right? But on most cases, it's, it's just ignoring that you're being called out for, for endorsing discrimi- discrimination and you just don't like it. So either you, you eat the critiques and shut your mouth or don't say what you had to say at all. Like you don't get it both ways. That's well, what I'm I, thinking. Yeah. I, I don't think that just just because somebody criticized woke, I don't think that means that they're being discriminate discriminatory. No? It okay. Well, here's the problem: is woke is in the eye of the beholder, right? Is so, it though? Well, what does it mean exactly? It be, different people have a different definition of what woke is. Like, okay. You like you talked about the original meaning, it has shifted meaning. Like that's very clear that the meaning has shifted over the years. Yeah. I believe the word got hijacked by the social justice movement. Um okay. and instead of being specifically about racial injustice, it started getting attached to all of these other concepts that really mm-hmm. didn't have anything to do with it. And it it became more of just an oppressor oppressy kind of thing. Uh-huh. Oppressor oppressor kind of thing, which Sure, there's definitely times where uh, mm-hmm. different groups are oppressing oppressing different groups, and mm-hmm. and definitely, like I said, government is the biggest oppressor of anybody. But All right. like when somebody is, if somebody is critical of wokeness, unless they define what that is, you actually don't know what they're being critical of. Like you can, you can hear it as somebody who's more favorable to the word and, and assume that they're being critical of what you believe wokeness to be, but there's actually no way to know that without having an actual conversation around it. And this is what I'm getting at is like, this is why I, I will use the word differently or not use it at all because there is a nuance that is getting lost there. I see people on the right being critical of wokeness and they start saying weird crap. I've heard people say, if you have small dogs, you're woke. And I don't know if you saw my dog earlier. I have a small dog. And it's like, well, how is how is having a small dog woke? Like this is like yeah, nonsensical stuff. Yeah. I've also yeah, yeah. heard people criticize nuance. Like I saw somebody's, X profile a while back where I was like, yeah. they said, they say, they said nuance is like a, a red flag word. And I'm like, that's kind of, in, that's just insane for me to hear because nuance is literally just wanting to, to mm-hmm. understand things at a more complex level and not see things like black and white and be like this good, this bad, this good, this bad. It's like, well, yeah, there's some bad aspects. And there's some good aspects. That's like yeah. nuance is like, right. but yeah, like I just think that when somebody is being critical of it, the way I've interpreted people who are critical of wokeism or wokeness, whatever. Right. Um, I think some people are being discriminatory. They're, they, 
sometimes do use that as an excuse to just be whatever. But yeah. I think a lot of people are criticizing elements of it that uh, are just not being articulated well. Like and like okay. I said, like they're, I'm against the hierarchy of oppression. I think it's nonsensical. I don't believe that. What does that and mean? That, the hierarchy of oppression. A hierarchy of oppression is like they're like if you're this sexuality or this race, like right. you are, it's basically a hierarchy of like, oh, this person's more oppressed than this person. This right. person's okay. more oppressed. Like the least oppressed in modern wokeness would be yeah. men who are white or considered white and straight probably. Like that would be the 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 higher the the least oppressed people. Right. It's like in reality a person who's white straight and uh male Men, could easily male. be oppressed it just it really just depends on the situation and it's like okay. are they oppressed because of their race probably not maybe not i don't know i mean I, white people okay. can be oppressed because they they could be discriminated against too but uh -huh. like, i i just think that you can't look at people's race or their sexuality or their gender and know anything meaningful about the person other okay. than okay, now you know what color skin they have or okay. what their sexuality or gender is, and it's yeah, like, yeah. Okay, I mean, it's I understand what you mean to some degree. If I just take the video, and I would, I would want to. Maybe I'll get to to speak to Lou. It's just a concrete example. It's just to to. It, and and then it comes to validations. I don't believe that Lou's a racist person at all. That's not, but he was making fun of or like to me, like that you think that the maybe uh, like people with like, I don't know, transgenders or homosexuals or what have you, that they claim rights or discrimination and that you disagree against that because you think that they have no oppressions and I guess fine. Uh, you know, they they have more rights than they used to have and they're still uh, probably denied rights that they would want to have, like being married or what have you, although there's more, more legality for the marriage, right? There are microaggressions, like microaggressions would be where you feel the judgment, where you are, den like when you are ostracized, like ever so likely where you have uh you're kept from promotions or you are talked around it's it's pretty much a felt thing and you you would have to experience it and maybe you have to some degree i don't know but it's 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 like you know it's like you feel it it's all around you and you know how the person feels so but that is another yeah. territory but to me, to use to make fun of something as flagrant as a, a a a police intervention gone wrong, or even January six, where you have a group of people that broke into the Capitol, right, and tore the place down because they disagreed on how I don't know what was the reason that they how the 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 election turned out. I don't even know, and. I don't know how Lou made fun of that, if he disagreed with it or not, like across the board. To me, that was that that specific one. And that one to me was off limits because however you feel about the guy, it's not an absurdity that people rioted and protested against it. It's something that had been going on for too long and frustrations had people just want to riot. And you had people that that legally protested, right? And, 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 and peacefully protested. And that for me drew the line. I was like, Oh, hell no. Okay. We're going to, I need to hear you out. I need to hear the, the reasoning in how you created that video because I don't want to go off for, and I would have gone off because it was your space, but I don't want to criticize you on wrong basis. Like you're wrong. No, there. You can. Not Honestly, yeah. Anytime I have a space, if you disagree, you're more than welcome to like, okay, more than, well. like I accept it. Like, as long as it's not like, yeah, I mean, I, I would never, I don't use dehumanizing language toward other people. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, you're a jerk or whatever. Like, as long as you're like, 
talking like, to me about the argument, the the concept, and yeah. not being like, "Well, you're a shitty person because I disagree yeah. with you." It's like there's really yeah. no room for a conversation. There. Yeah, but yeah. I would say. I mean, I think what happened to George Floyd was horrible. Like when I watched that video and he's got his knee on his neck for a long time, there were some nuances that people ignored. Like George Floyd was saying, uh, I can't breathe well before he was placed on the ground. Now, I, I mean, and he had fentanyl in his system. Does that make it okay that uh, the officer had his knee on his neck for like that long of a time? Hell no. Because like, if let's say, let's say the drugs he was on had something to do with why he died in that position. It's like still the officer having his knee on the neck, like it makes it so it's like, you can't really tell, like you have your knee on his neck and like whether or not that was the cause of death, it's like, it looks like it was the cause of the death. Like that's, that's the impression it leaves. But yeah, like, I do think there were some like, while I think protests are justified, there was some absurdity when you look at some of the things that happened with the protests because Which were, there were other people that died in the protests. And it's like, how does killing other people or destroying somebody's, I mean, in these communities, these very communities, some of them were like, mm -hmm. in, I think it's Minneapolis where the George Floyd happened, right? Yeah. So it's like Minneapolis got destroyed. Like things got burnt down small businesses got destroyed. And it's like, you can say that's property, but, and it is property, but it's like businesses mm -hmm. take a long time to create. There's data that you maybe can't retrieve. There are customer files that you can't retrieve. Yeah. There are, like that's people's livelihood. And it's like to see yeah. people killed in riots and, and businesses burnt down. How many people? There is killed? some absurdity in that. Cause it's like, well, how does that, make anything right like how is you know protesting okay. is like i want my voice to be heard mm -hmm. rioting is more i'm angry and i'm lashing out you know and maybe there's some reason to riot sometimes but i just think i think there was some absurdity with some of it you know okay so i can take that and i mean what i would like people to see because they're those who rioted were not always for the Black Lives Matters movement. Mm -hmm. Those are people, whether whatever colors they were, they just yeah. wanted to act out. I, however, I see no absurdity in it. And this is why I think it was wrong to, to call it out because the, 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 even to suggest that oh, well, he had a drug in his system. What are we trying to prove? Like that may or may not have been to, like made it worse. Like how? Like I, I've seen researchers that said it had absolutely nothing to do with it. And then some that said, right? Because then what you're trying to say is that his heart would have gave out before. Did he say he can't breathe before he was on the ground, I don't, I don't know. I have not seen that piece of footage. Um, you know, would it, would it be pointing to the fact that he was faking it and then, and then, and until he wasn't like, what is like, what, what are we trying to point out or make with those, those arguments? Like we have seen a police officer who could have, there's, to me, there's no, if you have somebody that is already handcuffed, right? That means that you have mastered, you have overpowered that person. So we cannot, and if you threw him the back of your car and that is like, there's a window, he could kick the seats. He could do whatever you have in him in custody. Mm -hmm. What is the next step? Bring him to the police station. What exactly in your mind as a police officer said, you know what, let me have him put, put him asleep a little bit. I think he's too agitated. So I'm going to do this technique and I'm going to have my partner guard the street and have people passerby kind of like ignore what's going on here. Yeah. So where is the absurdity in that? And this has been, and we're, we're, 
this has been going on. I could name names. You have to understand that George Floyd was the culmination of a long list of injustice when it comes to arrest, right? In terms of black people. So it's been a long time coming. And this one was like, it's in your freaking faces. What more do we want? And still you had people, well, he was a criminal. Well, he had done this. Like people don't want to believe that you have, like in government, ill-intended policemen. Are all policemen ill-intended? No. But this was clearly a breach of an abuse of power and illegal, by the way, because there's no way that I'm going to lean on someone. I don't. How in your deontology, that's a French word, but how in your code of conduct of police policing. You have to show me this technique could be used if you have a suspect that is too agitated and you cannot apprehend like. There's there I I you would have to bring me the legal case. And so that you had people protest and then you had people kind of act out on it and destroy property and livelihood. And and kill people. And kill people. How many like kill people? Like people were killed? Like who was killed? Like killed because of George Floyd? Like who was killed? Like I, I, I forget. Like, it. Was it was it as a result of like a ride gone bad or people were actually murdered. Right gone bad. It was, it was somebody, uh, I, I, there's one guy, I can't remember his name. Um, I believe he was a black guy and he yeah. was murdered because he was being, he was being robbed during the riots. I okay. think he was a former police chief or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I, his name started with a, a okay. D if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So, Okay, so when, I would when say, stuff like, okay, I do think there's an absurdity in that, and then I think there's also an a, absurdity. But what is absurd, though? What is the absurdity like point towards? Because there's Meaning, no because having another black person murdered does nothing to fight for racial justice. Okay, so if. If at the result of these riots, people lost their life, they were killed, right? Mm-hmm. Then that is bad. However, to make a direct case as to your whole protest is kind of absurd then because you this happened. Yeah, I'm not saying the whole protest is, I'm saying there's elements of absurdity. Okay, but still though, Artie. To to say that's at the very best that's being extremely strict because then that's that's saying everything that you that that happened afterwards as the aftermath would have have to been absolutely perfect and above board for it to not have any element of absurdity because if you say there are elements of absurdity then at some point you are kind of undermining the greater issue here, right? If you are, if you have, and, and you have a few elements, but other people will have a lot of elements. And, mm-hmm. and we're like, let's focus on what happened here. Like, we don't want people to die. People were out in the streets protesting, not killing people it happened okay i guess this guy was met by the law the person who killed the other person right and so to I'm make sure the, the guy case, that killed him got away with it like so this is this isn't okay, the guy but I mean, who how many like, police officer got away with murdering black people how many i don't how many? i don't know I don't know, but I don't know. I don't understand so, that. So, so meaning that I'm saying to say that he got away with it, like, how do we know that? How? Okay, let me bring myself back down. Meaning that to have within this conversation of wokeness and elements of absurdity to tie to something that is 
as clear cut in my eyes an injustice shouldn't even be mentioned because then it's like raising a higher standard on on our plight and i'm like what more do we need to to say for us to be heard what more i get what you're i get what you're saying but at the same time saying there's something absurd that happened in the mix of something doesn't mean the protests were absurd or the fight for racial justice is absurd. Like, I understand that. Artie. For in, I mean, and, and I think it's kind of, if you can't criticize the, the bad of something, then it's, yeah. it takes away. It's, I don't know. There, there it's lifting something up to a level that's, you know, as far as like the whether there were drugs in uh, George Floyd's system, the reason that's important is because, well, the the guy who did it is like, I think he got charged with murder or something, and that exactly. there is some some stuff to be figured out. There is like, did the drugs do it or did the knee do it? And there is a reason to figure that out for that legal question. But mm-hmm. as far as the absurdity of like a guy getting murdered. Because somebody was stealing something at a protest for George Floyd. Like, there is an absurdity because that guy being robbed and murdered did nothing for the, you know, it did nothing for the positive, like, aspect of the protest. Okay. And but then, it's the association, though, Artie. Like, yeah, but, this is, but this is like, why do we. It happened at the protest. Like, it, it happened at the protest, but was it, but it, ha- okay, but is it linked? Is it, is it, is it, should it be the responsibility? Like, does this, did the person who did that was, were they protesting? And then does the whole, like, I'm, I'm trying to point out, I see your point, but even to, to make this as a case, and I have to work very hard to say, listen, it's like holding the case to a higher standard and you will have people that that list that and that will say things about George Floyd's life and character as if that justifies what happened, which Lou did. Oh, he did that to a pregnant woman. He kind of did this and this and that. Like, how can you, it's, it's like, it's like saying we protested right against, it's like I organized a protest against you know, for Black Lives Matters. And during that mm. protest, somebody goes in, breaks into a store and kills somebody. Like, mm. and then people come and say, well, that's kind of absurd. You fight for for legality and your rights and you go and, and break the law. Like, I have to, nothing to do. That? Yeah, yeah but, but I mean, I have not nothing absurd. to do with yes. that. But yes. I mean, like, okay. why, why tie the action of this person to the the cause and what's going on. I don't you think still, there is a tie. I think you're I think making you might one be, though. But I'm I'm not. Because okay. saying saying the actions of that person who murdered somebody absurd is not saying the protests were absurd. That person was an element of the protest. Just like the agitators that were yeah. not fighting for uh, racial equality. Okay. The people who are just instigators, because there are people who just yeah. want to. There, there are people who are more revolutionary, and they yeah. just want the chaos. Right, right. Those people were involved in the protests, and it's like calling out that condemning their behavior is not condemning the protests, and and to excuse it and to to shy away from condemning their behavior is essentially excusing their behavior because of what happened. And that would be absurd in my opinion, because it's like, no, we have to be able to condemn what, what is wrong because otherwise you're just using one wrong to excuse other wrongs, you know, like, yes, you started, you you, uh, organized a protest. And if somebody got killed because of the actions of one individual, that individual, his actions are what's condemnable. His actions are what the absurdity is. It's not the absurdity of the protest. It's the absurdity of elements that 
used the tragedy to do more horrible things that were not in line for with the overall movement that you were supporting. So I think we need to be able to condemn that. Otherwise, otherwise you're basically having to say anything that happens during a protest that's for something uh, morally right, like the George Floyd protest, is excusable because overall most people are protesting for something good. It's like, no, if, if somebody's doing something bad, if some somebody murders somebody, I think their actions should be condemned. And I think that's just, I think that's just how it is. You know? <sighs> so I see your point. And I'll say this. I'll say that how can I make this a case? I'm saying that we were talking about George Floyd first, right? Yeah, and in yeah. most conversation, we were talking about George Floyd. And then you will have outliers like this being mentioned and raised. Well, what about that? And then all of a sudden you have to defend or take positions to explain a, a side occurrence that is made part of the whole. And that's what I'm opposing. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that killing is right and we should excuse it. I'm like, how are we talking about these killings? How does it compare? Like, should we compare? That's wrong. But like, it, it feels as if now I'm in a defensive position because as I am trying to make a point, a side point is being brought and I have to answer to this point where in my opinion, mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with the first issue and it's being made into the issue. And that's my... You were saying, well, that's kind of absurd. And there are like, because we started with, well, there are kind of absurdities, right? And I said, okay, what are they, right? And you kind of listed this one. And I'm like, mm -hmm. how are we including this to, to the greater discussion? What are we trying to, because an element is not just brought in just to sit there. You're trying to make a point with it. And that's what I'm generally opposing is like, it shouldn't be brought mean, meaning that, or it should be defined in its rightful discussion because therefore, if we are discussing killings and people losing their businesses, right? Right. In the wake of somebody losing their lives, then yes, we have an arachy. And then we have to discuss the whole thing and to say why it's absurd and not absurd. And to me, it's like another one more case where I would have to argue until I'm blue in the face that the first point that I was making is valid. And, and you were saying, oh yeah, we don't disagree, but this though. And I'm like, why are we talking about this? Like, what's the point? Like, what, where does this need to criticize it come from? What are we trying to say? Do you understand that there's what I'm an element of that? There were certain things that were absurd. That's it. I mean, it, it, it's not it, to though, me, Artie. it makes okay, but what I, what I feel like is. I'm saying, okay, these are condemnable actions. Like, I think murdering people is condemnable. It's horrible, no matter right. the situation. Like, what, what happened to George Floyd was horrible. What happened to the, the, I think he was a chief of police or something. He wasn't on duty. He was a retired guy. But he was just working or at a store, and he got murdered. I think that is condemnable. That it is condemnable. Mean, people hey, die every day. That focus is condemnable. On this. But like using the, the people who used 
the event of George Floyd's death to do worse things and to make an uglier world. And it was a small portion of people. There's no reason, in my opinion, so it was why worse. those actions can't be condemned. But I mean, huh? what, what makes it qualifiable as worse? To do worse things. When it, you kill people, you're making the world worse. Yes, you're making the world worse when you kill people. Uh-huh. So, so, so the, the people first person that was George killed, Floyd's that death, was bad enough. But to do it again, that wasn't bad? Like, I... Both okay, so, make the world worse. Okay. So, I don't know. Like, I think, I see no your point. At no point does killing people... Okay. I just, so what I'm saying is, pointing out that there were bad things that happened during George Floyd's protest is not saying everyone that was protesting George Floyd's death was doing something bad and they, they're condemned along with it. It's, I think it should be pretty... It, it it should and th- and there were protesters who who stopped uh, bad things from happening. Like there were people mm-hmm. who were agitating in New York, and there were people who stopped those people because it's like, no, get the hell out of here! You're not yeah. with this movement. You're just using this as an opportunity yeah. to do stupid shit. Yeah. And and it's the same thing. If somebody used the opportunity or used George Floyd's death as an opportunity to just take like from a small business, destroy, burn, and or kill somebody. Right. Those actions should all be condemned. And yeah. it has no, it's actually a positive reflection on the people who are doing the right thing and yeah. actually fighting for racial injustice or fighting against racial mm-hmm. injustice. It's actually a positive thing for those actions to be condemned and separated. Like that there's okay. no... There's no saying, hey, you were at a protest and something bad happened from somebody else, so you're bad. There's no, I'm okay. not saying anything of that sort. I'm just saying okay. the bad things that happen should be condemned. Okay. There's a I... level of absurdity in most things, I think. Like a lot of things in the world, even things that are like good causes, often there's some like, absurd element that gets brought in, especially when you have a lot of people because like people are unpredictable. And like, if you're going to have a protest with millions of people, it's almost guaranteed you're going to have an element of absurdity because some people do absurd stuff. Some people are not in, in, in line with a greater movement at any given time. So they're going to do some stuff that is not in line with the movement. Okay. So I'll say this to make one jest at at what I'm trying to say, one last case, is that I'm not saying that things shouldn't be condemned, right? If it's wrong, it's wrong. What I'm trying to point out is if that's not what you're doing, then that's fine. However. I've been myself in many a conversation where I start and call out the injustice. And then the other person comes back to me with, well, this happened. And that police officer was also killed by this black person and blah, blah, blah. Right. And all those, to Mm -hmm. my opinion, are brought down to undermine my first claim in the first go. They might not realize that's what they're doing, but it's still it's still in the same breath or the same vicinity saying this was wrong and here's why. And you saying, well, this is also wrong and it shouldn't have happened. It's like, can't can't my thing be acknowledged first without you bringing something else? Can't can't we and I'm not saying. And it feels like this is what happened with our conversation and many a conversation that I've had. There's always another point to be brought in. Just for what? Yeah. Right? I, and it, it makes me feel, to be honest, it makes me feel sad. To be honest. Because 
it's as if like, okay, we want to discuss absurdity. That's good. All of it was bad and absurd, but like, it seems that is that when it concerns, especially police brutality or all those things, there are always other points that are brought out. Like, I can't tell you, I could name so many. And it seems like, when are we going to get acknowledged? And it's, it's not saying that you weren't acknowledging it. People are saying, oh, yeah, sure. But so it's like saying, oh, I'm sorry you feel this way. Or if when you make it an apology, but this and this and that, it kind of nullify the first argument in, in the first place. I guess that's what I'm trying to bring. Like, I hear you and I understand you. And it's not that I'm trying to say, oh, no, if bad things happen during that protest, nothing should be mentioned. You're right. It, it's, it's, it's as dangerous. It's just that it seems most of the time to be done so within the same breath to underscore what has happened in the first place. To me, even if it's not, because I don't see the point in bringing those up unless it was the discussion in the first place. I don't know. I don't know if I'm being heard. Maybe you disagree. Um, I guess it's just I how think, I feel about it. I think, it. Uh, so, uh, okay. I think it's nuance. I, th I think there are multiple elements like, mm -hmm. yes, George Floyd's death was horrible, but it, okay, I guess the, I guess the only question I could ask is, what's the proper way to ha have the conversation to just say George Floyd's death was horrible. Racial injustice is bad. Agree. Like no, buts. and then nothing else is said, but what is there? But what, 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 what does need to be say said after that? That's, so that's we my can whole just point. never speak of anything bad that happened. Like, I mean, I'm like, just asking. Okay. Like, so, so if, if we, if we, okay. So if we say, you know, if our discussion would be sometimes riots go wrong or protests go wrong and at, in the context of the conversation, then we bring out all those other points, then there's a context for it, for sure. But if it's yeah. to me brought out of context, like we were talking about one thing and then you bring this other thing just to make a point, then to me, it doesn't have its place because that's not really what we were discussing. It's kind of like just wanting to, I don't know. Well, we were talking about Lou's video yeah, and he was pointing, he was, he was trying to highlight some absurdities that he felt there were. And I, all I said was, well, there were some absurdities in that whole thing. Like there were okay. some absurdities, there were some absurd elements. So I, I, I think like if if ever there was a conversation to bring up the absurdities, it's when we're talking about somebody pointing out absurdities. You know, I might not agree with the things he found absurd, but I do feel like there were some things that are very condemnable. And I mean, I'm using absurd and condemnable pretty much interchangeably here because, right. you know, like I, I just think that I don't, my intention is definitely not to say the protests were bad because right. of this absurd element. It's like the protests happened and that's what it is. And then there were also these people who used that occasion to do stupid crap that could undermine the movement and should be condemned because of that. Because if you don't distance yourself, like it's like, uh, okay, that's interesting. So, if, so, if so, right -wingers so there's a link to, for you. If, Meaning that you're well, saying... If, if right-wingers... Keep going. I'm saying that if people are using your righteous pursuit, your event to hijack it, essentially, and, yeah. and with malicious intent, they're saying they don't care. Like, I, I'd imagine I can't. I can't know right. what people think, but I can't imagine that people who are just using the event to go and cause crime and commit right. crime and potentially murder people. I can't imagine that those people are actually aligned with the protest. They're just mm -hmm. 
people using the event to pursue their own whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. like they're not actually protesters. Those are just people doing bad things and using the event. And like, I just Mm -hmm. don't think it's bad to acknowledge that people used that event. And if you have an event with thousands of people, it's like, Okay. You brought up January 6th. You brought up January 6th, which is interesting mm-hmm. because uh, let's say there were 50,000 people there. I don't know how many people were in D.C. Mm-hmm. on January 6th. Right. But let's say 500 people broke, like actually entered the Capitol. Mm-hmm. It, it could just be, it could be just as valid an argument to say, well, it's wrong to focus on what those bad people did because most people there were not doing anything wrong. I mean, and that's a factual statement. Most people were just protesting on January 6th, and then a small group of people broke into the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And those actions should be condemned, just like Mm -hmm. the actions that took place during George Floyd's protest that weren't in line with the protest should be condemned. People that burned down buildings and and just did and murdered people, that that should be condemned, in my opinion. And it doesn't. So it wasn't condemned? Meaning that I'm I, saying... I, I know some people condemned it, for sure. I think, I think the sticky area is when, if you think that criticizing that is criticizing the whole thing, I think that's where it kind of is like, well, I think it's kind of... I, I just don't think, I don't think that connection should be made. I don't think you should interpret condemning or criticizing that element as criticizing the whole thing. Otherwise, that creates the link. I think that's what actually creates a link is if you if you feel the need to brush over that or you feel like there's an association that's not been made, I feel like that might that's where a link starts to get made where it's like, oh no, like yeah, it should be condemned that it's just simple, like yeah, those people were doing stupid shit. that's absurd. That's condemnable. That's it. You know? I I mean, I think I guess I guess we're 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 not I think I think you have a point of view and I have another. I hear what you're saying, right? You're saying that may be bad, but some of the people have done other things and I need to point them out because they need it needs to be mentioned in the course of this conversation just so that we are the, truthful, right? It, it needs to be mentioned. They don't I mean, have to be. You yeah. don't have to point them out. It's like, it, but if I point them out, I don't think it's the correct interpretation to be like, oh, you're trying to undermine the movement. It's like, no, I'm just saying that there were some bad things that happened. Like, okay. I'm not saying anything against like the protest because I know many people who protested and I think I, I know I, I'm fine with protesting. I think protesting is your right. I think it's everybody's right. Okay. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't involved with the protest by any means, but mm-hmm. um, I have no problem with people protesting. I have a problem with people using an event like that to pursue their own goals with malicious intent. And I know that's a very, very small fraction of the people who were out and about for the protest. I just, okay. I think it's pretty simple to say, yes, those people were doing bad crap, nothing to do with the protests. And they were undermining the protest with that behavior a little bit and just distance yourself from it. Distance, distance the movement from that. And that's pretty simple. I think it is. Is it pretty but, I mean, simple? I, I'm open to well, yeah. Like to say like those people weren't actually But I think like I think the movement the did that people. though. I think the movement did didn't they do that or the 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 like I don't want to speak of things I don't know. I think that Well, the movement isn't like a monolith. Like so there's just individuals within the movement. Okay. So it's like I give up. I think that I and I don't want to give up. I want to have the conversation already. It's just that I'm trying to make a point 
to say, even though you yourself are not trying to do that, meaning that I understand that it cannot be your intent. I'm trying to say that the outcome kind of is doing this because I've been in this conversation and others where automatically criticisms is brought up. Like it, every time I've spoken about George Floyd or anything that has to do with racism, something was brought up. Well, that person was kind of a criminal or this and this and that. And I'm not, I'm trying to say, okay, but could we stick to this issue? Right. That's, that's all I'm trying to say. And I don't, I mean, maybe things need to be also brought or, or, or be brought in this vicinity. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know how to express myself in this point. I just think that it was, that it is another thing that it's an entirely other conversation that is I don't know. I'm trying to, the more I say, the less coherent I'm sounding. Um, so, so yeah, I don't know. That's all I'm saying is I think that it still achieves. It's not, it's like saying, well, you should distance yourself with that. If you want to have your whole thing valid. I don't know. I don't even know. Um, yeah, I, I, let me just stop and think about it. I think that I know I feel strongly about the point I'm trying to make is that right now, maybe I'm getting a little bit more emotional about it. And so I'm less able to, to articulate it correctly so that at least you can acknowledge what it is that I'm trying to say, because it seems that I keep having to defend my ideas in the first place. And, and it's, it's like, then then what are we discussing now right like if maybe we are at both sides and 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 we're not able to see both point of view maybe you see mine and i'm not able to see yours it seems that what i was trying to point out is valid right and is enough of a point on its own and maybe i need to work on arguments better to articulate why it is that i feel this way uh, I'll say that um, because to me, it's pretty evident to when's to at least my experience of it. And maybe you're saying that's a, a false way. That's a fallacy, right? That's not a right way to defend a point of view. Might be. Um, I, I, it doesn't shake my convictions though. So maybe it's, 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 it, it's a matter to construct the argument better. Uh, to have you see what I'm trying to point out because it seems that it that is isn't seen, um, and so that's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, I, that's it. I'm not trying to like arbitrarily argue against you or anything like that. I I didn't even see myself as arguing against anything. Um, okay, I'm, I'm trying to acknowledge what you're saying and and just say, but also this, you know, because. Uh-huh. You said there's a time and place, like those things are too separate. So, so basic, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here. Mm-hmm. You're saying there's a, these two things are separate. So what happened to George Floyd and the protests are separate from the people who use the protest to do condemnable things like murder, burn, and just take, take advantage of the situation. Okay. I am saying if, that, you know, if we why? had started because, the convert. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. Like you, because to me, bringing the two together, right? Like, I don't know how I'm supposed to go along with this information. Meaning that if we are bringing this happened during the George Floyd protest. Like, what do you make of that? I could only say, where could I go? I could say, well, that's bad. Like, what do you want me to say yeah. about this? Do you understand? I don't, there's nothing I want you to say about it. I'm just, no, no, no. But I but can I mean, say kind of the same thing of like, we, we started on the conversation because of what Lou criticized. 
Right. And all I said was, there were some absurd elements. Yeah. And now we're saying they're, they're, they're separate things and they, they're just separate topics completely. But had I just started with that, had I just, had we just out of nowhere started talking about somebody that killed, got killed during the George yeah. Floyd protests, or even if I try not to mention the Floyd protests, but yeah, uh, mention the dates and being in 2020 and around pro, I don't, yeah, I, yeah. I don't see a way where I could have brought up these other bad things that would have happened that would have been okay. So it, it somewhat feels like it's just don't speak about it. Because I, I guess I, or okay, maybe you so, can explain so, to me like, so what then, is the place or time that that's okay to talk about? Okay. So I guess... Let me think. Let me think because I really, really want to address it. No rush at all. This is my longest conversation, by the way. And I had no idea what, that it would <laughs> it would go this direction. I hope you're not like hating the conversation because I'm enjoying talking to you. Okay. All right. Well, no, I. it's fine. It's just. How can I put this? Okay. So you are right. It would be wrong to say, don't talk about this at all. It's just that I don't see the intent. Like to, to, or how can I bring this? to you in a way that you will understand. I don't, I don't have the way now. I don't have the way. Like I hear your point of view. I hear it, but I'm trying to say that in you saying, well, there are some absurdity. And I didn't start with, well, you're completely wrong to say it. And I'm trying to say, why does it have to be criticized as absurd when what we were, what the focus of the conversation was is the plural space to talk about an injustice. And I did say the reason why I had a problem with what Lou said is because he felt that something very serious to me was absurd. And if you mm -hmm. qualify something that is absurd, I guess maybe it has to do with the word and how I feel about it. If you have to qualify something as absurd, as something not making sense, as then you are, it's like a downgrade from the get-go. Like it's like, and so to me, even if you're saying, well, it's an element of it, to me, you bring it it up it it just taints the whole thing like there's only one fly in the champagne but now the champagne as a whole is bad because there's a fly in it and you're telling me well there's a fly there like and maybe even the argument that i'm making is not super sound i can realize that i'm trying it's like i'm trying to 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 make a point of something that i feel strongly about and it seems that I'm not doing a great job at it because it seems that it's not landing. And I, and even in all those cases, maybe that's what I'm saying, is that oftentimes in this conversation, yours and I, yours and mine, I don't know exactly what's the English, in what I brought out to about what Lou said, in people talking about wokeness there's always a side argument and a but yeah but this and to me i guess i bunch all of it together and i have a strong feeling about it because it seems to denigrate the whole thing and you may say well i'm not trying to do that but to me it seems that if you're saying yes, but the yes is kind of canceled, but your but because how you truly feeling 
is about that thing that you're bringing, right? It's, it's how I feel. It's, it's how I see things. And so that's why I'm so strongly trying to defend. Yes, but the first thing, that's what we were talking about. I'm not saying let's not talk about it at all. I'm saying, can it be fully acknowledged on its own without having to bring out all those other things aside? And it seems, it seems that it's often the case. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Right. And and I don't know if that's understood. Um, I don't know. That's why I have a problem with it. Yeah, that's that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. To me, the only reason I was pointing out some of the other things that were absurd is because it, we were talking about Lou making and. Em- like oh, yeah, was, I hear you. Uh, I hear you. He, he, you know, he's trying to make comedy, and comedy is usually pointing out the absurdity of something. Right. And like, I think one of the things in that skit is he had. Uh, so there's, I only watched like I think it's like a four minute video, and I didn't. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Lou. I didn't think the video was that good. Uh, I didn't. I didn't find. I didn't find it that funny. So, like, because I, right. I, I, I didn't know about this until after you brought it up in the space. Yeah, yeah. So it was like yeah. a few days ago that I actually started watching it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have an ADHD, ADHD brain, and sometimes if if I'm not interested in something, I even four minutes is hard to get through for me. So yeah. I only watched a minute and a half to two minutes of it, mm-hmm. and. I'm I'm not saying it's not like good. It's just not my it Cup wasn't it's your it's it wasn't your a thing. compelling or funny it wasn't funny to me. I didn't get yeah. offended by anything. I'm just like, eh, I didn't find it that funny. But I think one of the things uh in there is Godzilla's attacking buildings, right? Causing all this destruction. And then I think somebody somebody comes up and like blames it on uh racial injustice or something like I think I think if I'm remembering this skit right yeah yeah and of course it's absurd like that's an absurdity right if if Godzilla is uh attacking and it's like yeah but it's because of racial injustice like of course it's like it's, a, it's an absurdity that he's putting yeah, yeah. out there yeah and I think there were people who were linking kind of like making absurd claims at the time. It was a small percentage of people Mm -hmm. and they really like, they're not in line with the movement, I would say. But I I don't think, I don't think pointing that out, especially in the context of comedy, like, was it a hit or a miss for me? More of a miss. It didn't, it didn't really hit with me, but it's like, I think he's, it's, I think it's fair for him to, point yeah. out absurdities that he thinks is there. And then the only okay. reason I, I brought up the absurdities that I was pointing yeah. out is because I'm like, well, there were absurdities. Okay. And that, and that's why I said like, yeah, I, I understand. I understand where you're coming from. You okay. want racial injustice and, and what happened with George Floyd to be the focus without side conversations about other things that happen. You know, I mm-hmm. understand that at the same time, those other things happen and it's kind of hard to just say, okay, what happened to George Floyd was horrible and racial injustice is bad and the George Floyd protests happen and then just stop and and kind of have this like, agreement like let's just not talk about anything else things get discussed i i got like i don't know i maybe i'm not making sense but it's I'm, because i'm trying to say like I, okay i understand okay so here's how i understand you right you are talking from how you see things right and and, and these are valid i'm not trying to say that according to me this is how i see things i and maybe what you are. So, okay. So from your, your point of view, from your vantage point, 
this is what you see and those are facts and they need to be discussed. Like, I understand like in your voice, that's like, you're like, that's all I'm trying to say. And I'm like, fine. But even in that, and maybe it's because of not only my own experience, but observation is the but that gets irritating because it, it's, it always comes. Mm-hmm. Always. Like, and it comes in so many ways. Affirmative action. Mention in the same breath that, well, we should really, like, incompetent people are hired. First of all, what makes you say that these people are incompetent? That's a, a, a bias right there that you should examine. I'm not saying that it's it's there. It's just that I'm experiencing the culminations of all these little buts. And I'm like, again, again, with having to say, Let's focus. Like, even, I don't understand. Because, like, so many events in history where there was justice to be discussed. And I would have to be careful as to what I'm saying. So I would be curious. Let me say it this way. That if I were to look in history about injustices being committed and and no casualties having happened, I don't know how many I would find. But, like, you have things, I don't know. I would want to study what are the proportions of events happening where they're wholesale across the board adopted as, wow, it's bad. Man, that sucked that that happened. And nobody has anything else to say about it. Like, well, actually, while this happened, such and such officer was were killing action. I would be, I would want to know. It does seem, though, that when something is linked to racial injustice happening to a Black person, and I am saying this, I am, that there's always a but linked to it. That's what I'm trying to say. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say, why is that? Because the, the focus of this discussion was the injustice in the first place. But if we have to now pay attention to, well, that person being killed or this person while it happened, then it takes the focus on off of what was discussed, which was the injustice. So I'm, it, it's all I'm saying, Artie. Um, it's just me perhaps reacting and having a frustration with the form of the conversation that it seems that when it comes to those type of topics, I seem to be having again and again. And it seems to be always questions and, and then being brought, well, that's all I'm trying to say. It's like, maybe that's in your mind, right? That's what you're doing, but I'm telling you how it's received. In the reception of you pointing out me, the person who's bringing this up in the first place, I've experienced all those tiny rebuttals. And then we're, we're having this side conversation that was not the focal point. And even if we brought injustices, what I was trying to point out is why I had a problem with Lou's video, Lou videos, right? And the absurdities Mm -hmm. and what he was pointing as absurdity. I mean, I drew the line with, with making fun or pointing it as absurd as saying this man was murdered and then we're accusing Godzilla to make it as like, nah, dude, the claims were valid. Like those people were not in the street trying to, to protest against something that was trivial. 
And you calling yeah. it an absurdity makes it trivial. That's my problem with it. Right. And making fun of the whole and you putting this with all things you find absurd. You're making it trivial. And I have a problem with that. Yeah. Do, you, do you understand? That's that's my yeah. point. Yeah. Um. So here's what I think. I'm going to. If, if you don't mind, I want to say one more thing. And then I want to let you say whatever you want. And as long as you're not mean <laughs> uh, in, or like toward me, I, I won't respond to whatever you, I won't respond to whatever you say. And okay. then we'll just move on. Cause like, sure. um, I don't want to like, just kind of beat a dead horse and like talk in circles around each other. If we're not making movement on it. Um, uh-huh. I agree. Cause I want, I want to have a good conversation and yeah. I think, I think we're talking about important stuff and I hope people that listen get value out of it. Cause I mean, I think we're, I think we have some disagreement. I yeah. think we're seeing some aspects of the conversation differently. And I think, yeah. uh, I, I think there's, I think it's a healthy dialogue for the most okay. part. So, mm-hmm. um, here's what I'll say. Yeah. I, I can't remember the chronological order of our conversation completely. Sure. I know woke got brought up and then yeah. uh, we went on to lose video. Yeah. So uh, I guess where I'm a little confused is the insistence that the, the focus of the conversation was racial injustice doesn't seem accurate to me because okay the focus on the conversation it was just a conversation and then the video with Lou got brought up mm-hmm. and like I said he's pointing out things that he thought were absurd in that right and yes that that is in the context of protests that were involved uh that were around racial injustice and mm-hmm. and protesting that I don't understand how that means the focus of this this conversation or this point of the conversation was supposed to be about racial injustice. So I guess okay, uh, okay, that's what okay. I'm saying. That's why I'm saying like saying but like oh this but it's like it didn't start it as a mm, but it was started okay. as oh he was pointing out some absurdities and I do agree that there were some. Okay. All right. I understand. And I also think that we should move on. So I'll be brief. <sighs> How can I be brief? It's, it's, it's very hard. It's very hard. I understand why you're confused. I'll say this, right? I'll say this. Um, because to you, it's the conversation that is the focus, right? I guess. I'm responding to all the conversation I've had. So you're only privy to this one. So to use confusing is like, where do you get all of those other things? It's just that in this conversation, I'm recognizing common patterns, right? And maybe you, since you weren't in those conversations with me, what I'm responding to doesn't make any sense to you or you're kind of lost as to what it is that I'm, I'm like what got this reaction out of me and how did we get into racial injustice to if I am able to and it seems that to me it, it's it's perfectly natural to say to go from racial injustice to lose video because he took a racial injustice and made it a skit, right? To me, that was the point of this is what I have a problem with. And even using that and mentioning the absurdities makes it trivial. That that was That's my whole argument. And then that's my whole argument. And then I guess for you, you're like, but yeah, but we were talking about this and this and how are we getting there? So, um, I guess I'm responding to many conversation. I'm also responding to this one and it's saying to me, it's obvious why maybe, and I still think that it's logical that I would have this response. Maybe it isn't. Um, and it's okay if we move on and we disagree, I guess 
it's a matter, maybe if I were to listen to myself again, then I'd be like, oh, maybe I didn't do a good job into bringing that into focus. Uh, do I see your point of view? Yes. It's just I see mine and maybe, um, maybe I'm blind in my mind. I don't know. I, I guess to me, I don't see how it's not linked or how that, that is not connected. I, I, I don't see that. I see that it, it makes a perfect sense to me that I went there because at the whole is you made fun of a social injustice that was pretty dire and that was not even worth making fun of. And then you, I well, guess you everything. Lou, not you, right? Because I yeah, don't think yeah. I made fun of it. Lou. No, you haven't made fun of it. Uh, so Lou, um, and I'm when I'm saying you, I'm talking about Lou, but Lou, I wish you were there, brother. <laughs> I don't mean to be talking about you and you're not there. It's just, it's what we started off, uh, started on, um, anyway, English. Um, so, so that's it, I guess. That's the point. Uh, but already I understand um, and yeah, we can lay this conversation to rest. I think maybe we see the two differently and it's going to take a little bit more reflection to kind of get to your point of view. Yeah, that's all. That's it. I'm done. Yeah. It, it'd be interesting to revisit like at a later time, maybe when it's like, oh, you know, sometimes when you're in a conversation. Right. And I have this happen all the time when I'm interviewing people. It's like, I don't think I'm I analyze my conversations with people all the time like I'll dwell mm -hmm. on my conversations okay. it's so bad I'll be yeah. like I should have said this or I shouldn't have said this or I shouldn't have worded things this way right and uh, it is one of the problems with live conversation versus like over text I mean text has a bunch of problems because there's so much for interpretation anyway, but like with a, with a live conversation, right. sometimes it's so hard to find the thoughts that you have, uh, that you want to articulate. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. so hard because like, first of all, you're, you're trying to listen, you're trying to mm -hmm. listen to the other person talk. And then, mm -hmm. uh, they're bringing up points that you have to address. I usually, I have a, had a paper that I'm like, I'll write a single word every once in a while. I haven't written a bunch for this conversation, but mm -hmm. uh, actually I wrote one word. Yeah. I wrote vilify. Vilify. <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you're trying to find the words and then there's also other things being said and uh, other things to address because of what's said. And yeah. sometimes like, Sometimes you can really only find the words after stepping away from a conversation mm -hmm. and reflecting on it. And maybe, I mean, in this case, like we'll have a recording where we can listen back and yeah. I'm sure I'll have things where like, I didn't, I, I didn't actually make the, the point that I was trying to make there or what I was, what I was thinking didn't come across right or didn't come out right. Right. So there's always that, uh, room for, just not like you just, I mean, some people are good at it, but like saying exactly what you want to say, what's in your heart right, in the moment is extremely difficult. So it is. I, I really appreciate you talking to me and doing your best while I tried to do my best. And I know we didn't like meet in the <laughs> middle of <or> anything <laughs> like completely, but I still think yeah. it's a, it's good practice and, and, and a yeah. fun I've enjoyed the conversation with you a okay. lot. Okay. Like I said, this okay. is my longest conversation. So, but. Well, good. Uh, I want to ask, I, I don't want to keep you too much longer because we've been on a while, but I want to at least bring it to like a little bit different before we wrap up because, okay. you know, it's just movies. Let's go. Okay. What are your favorite movies? Ooh. Okay. So I have a few because also I've seen movies that I absolutely loved. And then lately I don't remember titles or so you forget a lot. Right. But th from those I remember, I do have a short list. And the top of it, 
would be Gattaca with Jude Law, and it's an old one. It's like 1997. Gattaca, G A T T A G A with Gattaca. Jude Law, Ethan Aki, and uh, Huma Thurman, and it's about classism okay. essentially, and 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 genetic hmm. uh, modification, and fighting to have the right to have your dream, right? Uh, it's it's a movie that I remember seeing at the movie theater in English. I was about, so it's 97, so I was probably about to, I was probably 17, about to move to Montreal. I already spoke some enough English yeah. to go see movies in English. And in my town, everything was in French. You had only a small portion of like a uh, English community, but I remember seeing this movie in English and it made such an impression on me. So Gattaca is actually one of my favorite of all. And mm. then I would have to put the John Wick series in it. Uh, the mm. fourth one being okay. one of my favorite. Nice. Yeah. Just for everything, the storytelling, the cinematography, the, the pace of the movie, what they were able to do. It's just all the scenes hit. Like to me, it was hmm. you, you, you had the plight of all those assassins that were ruthless, but you saw people stuck in bad situation, trying to come out and make the best of it. You had incredible action scenes that were intentionally, like intelligently scripted. Like it was the, the, the choreography of battles was just amazing how they fought, how they went. There's a scene where he has to fight all those assassins in, in a house and he's going from room to room. At some point, you don't see what's going on. You only see like the, 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 the light of fire shots, but you see the progressions of room and it just doesn't keep a beat. And you see him fighting it. It makes sense. It doesn't seem like, ah, oh, come on. That would never happen. He's just like, he's a skilled assassin and he's just very quick with, he's good at many, many things. And so all mm -hmm. the scenes made sense and how they were able to film like in, in a crane view or with a, I don't know how they did that. It was beautifully shot and was the right choice. How they were the chase in the around, like, I don't know what's this one in Paris where the Arc of Triumph is and he's trying to go to Sacre Coeur mm -hmm. and the shots and the killing and the pursuits. It was just, and the music, like it, it, it just is the perfect. Everything was balanced. Everything had its place. It wasn't something too much, and that's extremely hard to do. So you see me just gushing about the John Wick uh, series. The fourth one was just one of the best. So Gattaca, John Wick, um, and one that was not really known, but it's making it, it it's making it into my favorites. It's one of George Clooney's Midnight Sky, and it was Sky. yeah, and it's a sci-fi, and it's about this scientist who was so wrapped up and shut off right about his project he was not really able to like he sucked in emotions and and so basically it's his story and where it starts is that the earth is completely unhabitable it's hostile it's polluted it's a little bit like interstellar but very different and he is deciding to stay behind right? Because he has all kinds of cancers anyways, and they are trying to colonize a planet, but they are at their beginning and the rocket that they're sending just crashes, but he doesn't know, right? And in the movie, there's this little girl that has stayed behind and is trying to call back the shuttle and it's, it's not going well. He can't reach them. And then at the same time, there is already this spaceship that has gone before to try to find a livable planet and they have found it, right? And they were to come back to, to, to bring back the news, the report. And he's able to contact them by some luck. And he's saying, do not come back. There's nothing for you here. And he is trying to, in order to make contact with them, something goes wrong with his own uh, radio. So he has to make the trip back, which is very dangerous to another station with this little girl. 
And all those things happen. And this is how they are building tensions in the movie. Like it's nothing like there's no monsters per se. It's just the nature is the monster and the, the environment in his own cancer. And it's, it's, there's so much action. You are actually like at the edge of your seat. Like, will they make it? The script is so well done. The acting is on point. Um, and so when all of those are there, like it's, it's making it into my, like my favorites. So, uh, yeah, Gattaca, the John Wick series, Midnight Sky. There are others also that are some of my favorite, but on top of mine, those are some uh, of the best ones. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh-huh. Uh, do you have a movie and, and no worries if you can't think of one. Cause like, as I was thinking of this question, yeah. Or as the question popped into my head, I was like, I can't think of an answer for this one off the top of my head. But is there a movie that everyone around you likes that you don't like? Ooh. Hmm. There was probably one. I know there were movies that everybody disliked and I liked. Right. Mm-hmm. And right, yeah. Beetlejuice being one of them. Everybody was like, eh, in the space, yeah. so so. And I'm like, it's awesome. Um, <laughs> one where I, it's it's tough. I think there are movies that I've waited until the last minute to see because I felt it was overhyped. Like the, it's not yeah. a movie, but the the Game of Thrones series. I'm like, uh, everybody's on that. It's I don't want to jump on that wagon. So I waited. Until the, I think it's, it's sixth season to binge the whole series. Like finally, that's what ended up happening. Mm -hmm. So I liked it. Uh, and one, it was, uh, what was it? The both with Bella and, and Jack. Mm. Like the, 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 the sinking ship. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm, I'm, I'm I'm asking for your help. Titanic. Titanic, exactly. Are you talking this about one? Titanic. Okay, yeah. I waited to see it, and when I saw, I was like, "Okay, uh, I, I liked it, but I don't mind that I waited so long to see it. It was just an okay movie for me, <laughs> but at the time, yeah. it was the next best I saw thing. that. I wonder. I wonder if you would have like felt differently if you saw it. That was, that movie was like '90s, right? Like mid '90s yeah. or something. Because I was yeah, young yeah. when I saw that movie. Yeah. And uh, I remember I got a little choked up. I was like, you did. "Don't be corny," <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm thinking that in my mind. But like, I was like, I didn't okay. like cry, but I, like you know, a little teary eyed, you know, because it's yeah. sad. But. I uh, I saw it at the movie theater, and I'm like, I wonder okay. if you would have felt the same seeing it in the movie. Because there's sometimes there is a little bit too like that atmosphere when you go and see a movie for the first time, and you're in that yeah. movie theater, especially in the '90s. No one had no one had cell phones, right? Like yeah. no one was on their phones or distracted with anything else. And like, yeah, I, I wonder because it was a I thought it was a decent movie, but I haven't like watched it again. Maybe I've watched it, was, it one more when time, I saw but I haven't. It. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe because I had the time to hear everybody kind of gush around the movie and say, oh, it was so good at the time. Because in the 90s, I was, how old was I in the 90s? I was already at least a teenager at the beginning of the 90s. And by mm. the end of the 90s, I was 18 or 19, like 17, 19. So so, so then I was like, ah, I had the time to find it corny or to just not be on it. And I had already all those preconceived ideas. So to me, it was just, it was a good movie, but did it deserve, like, it was yeah. an avatar. Like it's, it's, it's not, but then again, would I have the, the same reaction? Because I, I saw Avatar at the movie theater, right? Like Lord of the Rings. I've seen it yeah. all three at the movie theater. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings, yeah. actually. This one. Lord of the, the Rings battle. is a great trilogy too. Like, yeah. 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 What was the one where yeah. like 
Gandalf had been the white and then they're coming down and you see them. Yeah. And they, they took that in Game of Thrones too. That was actually awesome. So yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, like I told you uh, yeah. before the interview, I was like, if I, if somebody asked me my favorite movies, I have to look at like a list of the top movies to remind myself of what movies I do like. Not that I like like them in that order, but I'm like, uh, I looked at the IMDb top 250 or something. I'm like, okay, uh-huh. like, yeah, I would assume like some of these that are in the top 100 are some of my favorite, you know, but so, it's hard. Like movies okay. are hard because it's like, there's so many. There is, there's a lot. I want to ask you, do you have a favorite movies or you would have favorite books before movies? <sighs> I have both. Like, if, okay, so I, I can list a few movies. Like, I like, like what on, is, okay, let me ask huh? you, what is easiest to remember, books or movies? Um, well, I have bookshelves with all my books here. So like, that's Good. really easy to like, if somebody asks me my favorite books, I'm usually going to start looking and being like, oh, this, I like this. And, and it'll change from time to time. And that's the same thing with movies. I don't have a, a shelf full of movies. Right. But like what I might say is my top movies today might not okay. be the same next week. And they might be back to the same in two weeks. Like it, it I'm sure you've, uh, I would imagine you've kind of the same, your mood in the moment depends on what you're going to say. Like yeah, what's going to come to mind. And but I have like stables, like the 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 one that I remember is are are the yeah. constants. I mean, okay. So then I'm curious because I have this idea of you that you are not that much into movies, but you you say I oh, know I like movies. Okay, so what would be your favorite ones? You're thinking um, hard. <laughs> well, okay, like. <laughs> Funny movies, like I love Step Brothers uh, and I love comedy in general. Like I love to okay. laugh. Um, but as far as like just great movies, Man yeah. on Fire would be one of them. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, then I haven't seen that one. The I Batman think. series that started okay. in like 2006 or 2008, whenever that was. Um, oh, yeah. 2005. Yeah. I don't remember with, when it was. With the uh, East Ledger. But Batman. Yeah. Yeah, so he was in the and second Christian, one with the, he was the Joker, but who Christian Bale, Christian yeah. Bale, so the Christian yeah. Bale series, those first two were amazing. I liked him. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. both the first I really like that. And then uh what else? Um uh, see, like I had something in my head five minutes ago that's not in my head anymore. But uh Yeah. Oh, uh Goodwill Hunting. I thought that was a really yes. good movie. I like, I like uh, Robin Williams Absolutely. in it. I thought it was so good. Yes, um, it is. And you know that hey, movie you like I apples? watched again? I got a number. <laughs> how you like them apples? You Sorry, know that what? I did not like how yeah. you like them apples? Yeah, that famous line. You know that I rewatched it and it was as good, if not better, the second time. But I did not. There's part of the ending that I did not really truly got. Like, what did he mean in that scenes? But it was it was uh, an excellent movie. In Good Will uh, Hunting? In Good Will Hunting, when he keeps asking or telling Will, you know, it wasn't your fault. And Will's like, yeah, yeah. And he insists, no, it wasn't your fault. And then he has to say it yeah. a couple of times until Will breaks down. And I'm like, what is he talking about? Did you get this scene? Do you remember which scene I'm talking about? No. I do know the scene you're talking about. And actually there were, I hope this doesn't sound weird, but there was a, the first time I saw that scene, the context was weird to me. Cause I was like, cause he's like, don't do this to me. Not you too. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I thought it was like going to go in a different direction in a bad direction. I'm like, mm-hmm. I didn't. I don't want to dive into that too much, but I was mm-hmm. like, I don't, I don't understand that. But yeah, I, it was a, it was a different kind of scene. It was because it kind of came out of nowhere. What wasn't your fault? Like what he's saying wasn't your fault. Mm-hmm. He's not, it's not actually really clear in the movie. Yeah. So like wh- yeah. exactly what they're talking about is not very clear. So, yeah. But yeah, okay. I, I like that movie. 
So, uh huh. Okay. Um, and then that's cool. Yeah. But books are, books are easier for me. But uh-huh. I, I do have a question about language for you. And then I'll, I'll let you go in a second because <laughs> yeah, yeah. just so long. Okay. You speak two languages fluently. Yeah. You speak French and English fluently. Uh huh. Do you think differently based on the language that you're think, thinking in? That's a very good question. Like, does it affect the way you think at all? Um, to a degree, yes. To a degree, yes. Yeah. Because language touches on identity a lot. So I think. Yeah. And it's not just information right you're relaying it it's it's how you're relaying this information and how you're relating it to it and how you sound in one language and the other i think that um the core right remains the same but i am different in one language and the other there are some hmm. notable differences that if you know me you will see that my sister pointed out to me. I'm like, she was like, why are you? Because in English, for example, like there are two sides. There's the chipper type of size, like, Hey, how you doing? Da, 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 da. And that in French and in Canadian French, Quebecer, that it's not really, it's not really in the culture. It is and isn't right. And so my sister was like, why are you so chipper? That's not you. Like, because I, in my video, it would be, Hey, it's Emily, blah, 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 blah. And she was like, no, what is, what is that? And, and I had to kind of tone it down a bit, but, and you would see me maybe, maybe less before because one is the language I grew up in and the other one I took and I was pretty much a, a self made adult. Like there are things that have changed. So I find that I have a bit more confidence when I'm speaking English, even though it's not my first language, just because of the context in which I got to immerse myself in it and how I, I use it. Right. English is how I'm hosting my spaces. Yeah. Right. I'm debating ideas. I, I I get to do that in French too. There's just less context. Like I speak with my family. Maybe when I'm at church, I'll have discussions because we do have a discussion group where we are discussing points of the Bible. But I'm not, there's a side of myself that I express in English that I don't express in French and maybe vice versa. So, hmm. so yes, there is uh, something to That's it. Yeah. yeah really yeah. interesting. Yeah. I love well, language, question. but I'm Thank not you. fluent in uh, any other. I've like dabbled in a bunch, but like, yeah, I don't speak anything. I can speak a little Spanish, a tiny bit of uh-huh. Russian, but not very much aside from that. So, okay. That's would cool. You be that's able really to, okay. <laughs> would you be able to build on what you, like if you were put in a context where you had to communicate, would you be able to build on what you know, like faster? Like, would you be able to get yeah. around and then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would love, yeah, yeah. I would love to, uh, what's that called? Is It's not assimilation. It's uh Immersion. Is it assimilation? Like where, where you go, you, you go to a place where the language mm-hmm. is spec or. Yeah. Immersion. I'm, like I'm an blanking on the word, but it's like, I'm, I'm, you do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. like you're in the situation. Like you, you, you're forced to basically learn, like uh-huh. sink or swim. Like I would it's, love that. Yeah, but, it's 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 yeah. is is it a word immersion? Like I M M E R S I O N. Immersion. Yeah, that's it. I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, immersion. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah I don't know okay. why some way is what I thought, but yeah, immersion. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, one other question: Do you? You're a curious person. If you, what's one thing that you don't know much about that you really want to learn about? Oh, or like time. a hobby you want to explore or something, just something that you haven't taken the time to yet pursue, but you're like, that would be interesting. Wow. 
Uh, there are many. What would be a good one? Meaning that one that I often disregard and I would have loved to pursue. Uh, I think, I think there's one. Okay. There are actually two. So I would have loved to do like keep doodling, but not just like, Hmm. like I was into like optical illusions, like at some point and I used to make those and I would have loved to pursue it, to know it better. I think that's one. And another one would have been to knit, actually. Hmm. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's my mom used to knit and crochet. And to me, it was like, uh, I tried. I was never super good at it. But it's just because those who do knit and crochet are so passionate about it and they're so into it. I'm like, okay, am I missing out? Like what, what is going on with this? So I, I remember, um, I was, I was in Korea and there was, was I in Korea or China? I I was in China and there was a group, a meetup group that met. And it was this young girl that met all those crocheting people. And they, they were so enthusiastic about crocheting. And I was like, okay, why hmm. like what's up with yeah. that so yeah i was yeah i would i would do those things i would have pursued them uh and another one is just that i didn't have the the money but i did uh i tried out dragon boating at some point and this i would have also pursued as a sport should have had like more opportunities to do so dragon boating it's it's super fun it's hard and something about it, about the technique, like it's, it's different than kayaking to me because you kind of have to do this dip with your body that it's not just the motion of doing this. You kind of have to throw your body into the wave and have to do this wave for things. So, and then you have the mm. collar behind you that, that, that tell you push, push, ha, ha. all those figures is just, uh, yeah, I would have loved to get into dragon boat before dragon mm. boating. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you. All right. Well, I, I always love to ask people about books. We talked, I mean, you, me- you mentioned 1984 and I, yeah. I know you, you said you haven't been reading a ton lately, but are there any yeah. books that have really influenced you in your life? <sighs> I'm sure there were. It's just, I am trying to remember them. Um, there was, there was this, uh, Yes. Okay. Actually. (laughs) So I, uh, when I was younger, I read the little house on the prairies, the series, and I was so impressed by the strength of Laura Ingalls and all the adventures that she had. I read maybe like at least three or four books, uh, if not more, uh, one of them being the winter that never ends. Uh, Hmm. and it was, yeah, it's a book I remember liking a lot. And I would read all those uh, Choose Your Own Adventures uh, when I was younger and a series about twin girls who were blonde and they were doing all those investigations. They seemed to be my favorite. Yeah. And um, I read also, it's a mainly French-Canadian series, but it's called the uh, Les Filles de Caleb, which are could be translated by the dollars, the daughters of... Caleb, hmm. uh, which talks about this this uh, young woman at the turn of the century that was strong-willed, uh, and all she could do was to become a teacher. But she she did, and she fell in love with one of her students. And it, she had so many. It was love and a passionate love, but it was a toxic love. And she was often yeah. alone with so many children, and and he would be irresponsible. And so I've read all the books that influenced me a lot into seeing the world and what what else was uh, influential on me as well it was uh little women little women mm. i've read was also influential uh and another one that i liked that i read some time ago but at least more recently was uh, age of innocence 
uh, from Edith uh, Wharton, and I loved the book. It was absolutely amazing to me um, how she wrote uh, this character and 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 the two were like female characters were so complex. And May, which is the young woman that that one quote unquote that remained married to this guy who was in love with an older woman. Uh, was the most cunning of it all because she appeared demure, but she, 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 she was crafty. And hmm. yeah, so those are the books that were super influential to me, or at least I remember having an impact on me. And the last one was One Day, which was made into a movie about this, uh, like star crust lover, if you could call them that that loved each other, but it seems they were, there was like this popular guy and this dorky girl. And uh, they had this one night stand and then kind of became friends and never really had the chance to be with one another, but they found their way back to each other. But then something tragic happens and the love that was uh, ended before it really started. So it was a book that I liked a lot. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Those were the books that made a strong impression on me uh, that made me like the universe of books. Um, and of course, Ready Player One and Ender's Games. Those were my favorite. Yeah. Because Ready Player One, I remember liking and devouring it from the first line of the book. And I was like, wow, I'm interested. I have to get into the story uh, of that. Um, and Ender's book, it was just so complex and, 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 and tragic and dark that it was better digested in a book. Although the movies was pretty good. Uh, so I don't know how they had an impact on me. Oh, and there's this book from the, do you know, my God, I thought I hadn't, I wouldn't have anything to say about books, but there's one from Murakami. I always, it's this Japanese author and he, he did nine, like nine Q, one Q84, which is a take on 1984 and Norwegian Woods, uh, those were some of the books that I really had an impression on me uh, and that I liked a lot. All right, Emily, uh, yeah. after some little technical issues, <laughs> re-recording <laughs> just to wrap up. So right. um, thank you so much for joining me today. Before we wrap up, I just want to hand it over to you so yeah. you can let listeners know where they can find you on X and maybe your newsletter and anything else you want to share with listeners before you yeah. wrap up. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of things are still in the making with the new the newsletter for sure. But on Substacks, I'm Emily Nerds Out. Uh, on X, it's Hey Emily Boyf. Uh, you do have the Nerding Out platform, but you mainly will find me on A hey Emily Boyf, uh, which I will uh, um, share with you. And I have Spaces Weekly. Um, right now, I'm a little bit in a rebuilding mode, so the Spaces are halted for a while because I want to restructure the show. But normally, you would have shows every Mondays and Fridays. Uh, now at 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Mondays, where we talk about movies and pop culture. And on Fridays at 4 p.m., usually to talk about all kind of headier topics that we want to dive into to nerd out about it, essentially. So that's how you can find me. Awesome. Well, Emily, yeah. it, it was, this was by far the longest conversation I've had. And yeah. I really enjoyed it, even, even through the contentious parts. So yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, I look forward to talking to you more. Well, absolutely, Artie. Thanks for having yeah. me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Thoughtfully Mindless. If our conversations resonate with you, consider leaving a five-star review on Apple and Spotify. It goes a long way in helping the show grow and reach more listeners. If you'd like to support the show, you can go to thoughtfullymindless.com under the support tab, where you can find my Amazon affiliate store where I have brands that I personally use, and fractalzoo.net, 
which is where I have unique fractal inspired t-shirts that I design. You can find me on social media on X at RDTM podcast and Instagram at thoughtfully mindless. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. Until next time, stay thoughtfully mindless.